Welcome to this Saturday afternoon football matchup, 2 p.m. here at Dunning Stadium. Dylan, it looks like we beat the rain. Myself, Greg Tomasco, my partner for the afternoon, Dylan Stevens, coming to you from the booth. Looks like we have a very close matchup today. The Rams have played the last four out of five of their games in the rain, and both teams are 4-1. and one. What do you have on their last week's performances? Yeah, so starting off with Wilton, they had a close game against Staples. Uh, they had they took their first loss of the season to uh, Staples on homecoming, which a close game of twenty two to twenty nine. Right, and then uh, New Canaan come off a big win against St. Joe's at St. Joe's, forty five to seven, and Luke Robinson played great. You know, he went four for seven completions in the first half with four touchdowns. So every completion was a touchdown. Right, and what we didn't touch on there was the fifth touchdown they had in the first half was actually a rushing touchdown by him. So we'll we'll have more on him later. But obviously a lot of talent from both teams are coming off of great matchups and you know that they're going to be one of this is going to be one of those weeks where it comes down to who's going to put that fifth win on the record. Both teams are four and one, looking at a postseason play. Both teams want to be that first seed in the FCAC, want to be the first seed in the state for both those tournaments, so they have a lot of momentum going into them. Yeah, it'll be an interesting game today. Both teams four and one, FCAC rivalry. Rivalry. We know two years ago. Uh, Wilton was not the favorites to win, and they surprised everyone and came out with a huge once again win against New Canaan. So this game could go either way today. Right, an absolute doubt. And and last year, we'll, we'll touch on more of this later, but the final score is 45-0, so an embarrassment at Wilton's home turf. Um, the Rams are going to look to be very, very dominant uh, this year in terms of what they've done and, and continue that dominance as they held Wilton scoreless last year. Um, so now we'll take a look at some SEAC comparisons uh, some SEAC standings here, uh, class class division L. We have Newtown at the one, Nagatuck at the two, and uh, New Canaan at the three. There's a lot of movement here in the the SEAC standings ever since the the huge matchup uh, which happened last weekend, where I believe it was North Haven. It might have been that uh, lost a huge game and it, it took some teams out of the rankings and moved some things. So we have the Rams at three for division L, South Windsor at four, Darien at five. Division Double M, we have Cheshire at the one. Wilton's two, number two for their division at four and one. Uh, Massick at three, North Haven four, and Platt at five. So we'll now send it down to the weather. Uh, our sideline reporter, PJ Neville, for more on how he thinks today's weather might impact the game. And technical difficulties there. We're, so, we're sorry about that. Um, you know, we, we'll cut back in a minute to PJ. We weren't getting some audio from him. So, Dylan, let's get to matchup comparison. Obviously, as we said last year, New Kingdom won 45-0. You know, a, a big embarrassment to, to Wilton to not putting any points on the board. But we had a lot of record-breaking performances, including Tucker Millian, Milligan, who beat the New Kingdom touchdown record for longest pick six, which was over 100 yards as he caught it in the end zone and went all the way. Yeah, you know, you know, both of those teams were completely different teams as last year, though. Uh, New Canaan was state champs this year, and Wilton's a lot better this year. Now, as we saw, they're a top three team in their division, so as New Canaan, so it will be a competitive game today. Right, we're going to get into our players to watch today. Uh, so I'll start us off here. Wilton, obviously a very talented team with a lot of talented players. We have Todd Woodring. Uh, he's been a force that they've used all season, a very beneficial player to their roster uh, and a guy who kind of does a lot of things for them uh, on the field. Uh, we have Mac McGovern from Wilton, very talented player, uh, great on the ground. He had 98 total yards uh, average per game so far this season. So we'll see how his impact to the team is going to play out here tonight. Uh, and as far as players to watch for New Canaan, who are some of your top guys? Yeah, so obviously Luke Robinson coming off as Rudin Player of the Week this past week against uh, St. Joe's where he put up crazy stats just in the first half because after that they didn't, even, they didn't even need him anymore in New Canaan. Right. And then we, obviously we have Alex Benevento who's been the game-changer player this whole season and he's 
the guy to look out for today for New Canaan. Right? right, Alex Benavento is one of those guys that's first on the team for total touchdowns and first on the team for total interceptions, 7-3 in that respective order. So he's a do-it-all kind of guy, and when we talk about do-it-all kind of guys, that's what both of these teams are going to rely on tonight. Wilton with a lighter roster, about half the size of this New Canaan team. So New Canaan with a lot more depth, especially at the running back position. We've been saying that all year. Um, but moving on, let's get into your predictions. Who do you have tonight? You know, this could be a uh, close game, I think. I think it could go either way. I think it's going to end up being a one-possession game at the end of the by the time it's final. Right. But I, I'm going to give it to the New Canaan Rams. Uh, I think they're on a roll. They started off slow after a tough loss to Shelton. But since then, no game's even been close to them. They've been dominating this whole season after that. Right, and a crazy stat we'll, we'll confirm later that we have down. But uh, I believe since that first half of the Shelton game, uh, New Canaan's outscored opponents by – I mean, close to 200 to almost maybe 30 points again. So some remarkable, remarkable numbers out of them. And, you know, we talk about that Shelton game. It got delayed because of the rain. So um, rain's been a huge factor for the Rams this season. As we said, four to five games they played so far have been on the rain. Today they were supposed to see a lot of rain. But, you know, from the looks of it here at Dunning, it, we think they'll beat the rain. So we're very excited. Yeah, I think it will be interesting because I think the rain has benefited the Rams in a lot of their games. And without the rain against a competitive team, it could show a different uh, New Canaan Rams football team and could uh, make a closer d game that they're not used to because at this point they're so used to playing in the rain. Right, and the Rams have had so much time to adjust to this weather. So now we'll cut it down to our sideline reporter, PJ Metal, uh, Neville, for his weather impact report. Thanks, guys. And today we've had some very spotty weather. The Rams have been very well adapted to the weather, though. These past four out of their five games have been in rainy conditions with wet turf. The ball gets wet, and that might limit the passing game. But today, you still got a little bit of wet turf, so on the snaps, the ball might get a little wet. But Luke Robinson should be pretty well adapted to it, and he might be able to pass even better this game than he has in his previous games. Back up to you. You know, we, we're going to talk about some, some cool stats here. Uh, as we were saying before, starting with the second half uh, of the opening week loss against Shelton, New Canaan has outscored opponents 191-32. to After that first half of play, the Rams have been relentless. I think part of it might have been due to that rain delay they faced and the long bus ride up to Shelton. And obviously Shelton wants to defend the Connecticut Valley, and they hold a lot of pride in that. So... That opening kick return touchdown against the Rams really shocked them, and I think it took them a half to figure that out. And we've seen they've obviously recovered from that, and now they've been able to play a full game every game since, where it wasn't them uh, waking up in the second half. And we've been able to see them play a full game and really dominate every team coming up to now. Right, and when you look about tangibles and those things that you can control throughout the game, the Rams are averaging 246 yards gained per game offensively. That's 77 passing and 169 rushing. The defense has allowed an average of 146. So that extra 100-yard difference that you're looking at between offensively and defensively has really been the key to the Rams winning these games because if you're averaging more on offense than you are on defense, obviously there's going to be a lot more points scored throughout that game. Yeah, and I feel like in the past we've seen the New Canes defense really dominate more than the offense in past history. But this year we've seen a great offense, very clicking together, right. passing and running. And it's really fun to watch, and it's been working really well. I think that goes with the new offensive coordinator uh, who's really – been a big impact this year. Right, Coach Nugent's been doing a lot uh, better for the Rams this year in terms of play calling and advice and stuff like that than uh, who the Rams had last year and Coach Farina who's now uh, over at Newtown. So if those two teams face, we'll see a big rivalry uh, later this season. So here come the Warriors first. They'll walk out of their locker room as we see the white uniforms with the gray pants and Dylan will see something very cool from the new Canaan Rams tonight. The first time wearing their red jerseys. Uh, and they're actually in Bulldog uniforms, the Georgia Bulldogs. So they've got their, their light grays on the bottom, and then they'll have their reds on top, and that uh, cherry red helmet will come to appreciate here, and we see their uniforms in a sec. And uh, tonight at halftime, we'll be honoring legendary Bob Vander Hayden, uh, the voice of the Rams for 65 years, the in-house uh, PA announcer who is known for his saying, here come the Rams. 
Um, so it's very exciting. We'll be having a special halftime ceremony. So stay tuned for that. 65 years, and here come the Rams. Speaking of it, Dylan, wow. Those uniforms are cool. Yeah, I love them. It looks a little similar to the Georgia, but they switched it up a little bit, and I like how it looks, especially with the American flags holding in their arms. And here come the Rams. And there's that iconic voice from Bob Han Vander Hayden. It's very cool to hear. 65 years. The Rams are about to walk through. It is youth night here at New Canaan High School, or I should say youth afternoon. It's you know, interesting getting used to the time change. We've got our game being played at 2 p.m. today, and the sun is coming out. And captains up front leading us out. Ben Reagan, Ben Sibbett coming through the pile of youth players. That just shows the, the culture we have here at New Canaan High School and the town of New Canaan to be able to have that kind of support from the youth. And, I mean, you, you just look at the size of these high school players. It really shows that New Canaan cares about the growth and development of their guys as they get into high school. And you could already see it's starting to get a little competitive. Watching the Wilton players watching the New Canaan Rams run out as the New Canaan Rams run onto the other side of the 50, which is usually not something you do in pregame. Starting already to get a little chippy. I know I've talked to players and also like just the bomb squad, and they're ready to get at it. This is going to be a personal game, in my, my opinion, and I think it's going to be very competitive. And Dylan, look, I think that's the perfect word to use is personal. You see a lot of that nowadays from Coach Prime uh, over at Colorado, but... This, this team, 45-0 score last year, it's, it's not something someone else takes very lightly, especially uh, when you get knocked out on your home turf. And we see the, the youth football team just running around the field right now. We'll start to get them off, and the game will be starting soon, Gray. And Dylan, as you said, obviously running onto the field past the halfway, that's not something that can go unnoticed. And, that just shows that today's game is a rivalry. New Canaan uh, versus Wilton is always a rivalry in any sport, but especially in football and lacrosse for that matter, that history the two towns have, uh, it builds a lot, a lot of intensity, and, and that's just something you can feel here today at Dunning. Yeah, both towns are very old and have been in Fairfield County for a while now, so they've been going at it for years and years and years, and just like another, they're going to be going at it, and they're going to be giving it everything they got. And the captains take the field here along with a few chosen youth players. This matchup is just moments away from kickoff. Two minutes, 30 seconds to be exact. Dylan Newcanon is 37-10-1 all-time versus Wilton in football. 37-10-1. Yeah, so that shows newcanon has been dominant in the, the history of the matchup. And I feel like... They could add to another win, not being biased or anything. I just think New Canaan's the more dominant team, as we've seen previous this season, but you never know. It is homecoming. Uh, it is youth, die, youth day, and Wilton has a chip on their shoulder. They're coming off a big loss to uh, Staples, and they want to win this game. The Rams have won the toss here. Momentum already in their way before the kickoff. Dylan Wilton finished 2022 with a 7 and 3 record. One of those losses, as we said, the 45-0 to New Canaan. But this year the Warriors are looking stronger, led by quarterback Joey Haggerty, running back Mac McGovern, tight end Kale Dexter, D-line George Papa Cosmas, and linebacker Ty Woodring. Two of those players we mentioned our players to watch. Yeah, both teams have great players, and we'll get ready for the national anthem now. We'll be back to you after the playing of the Star Spangled Banner.
theme for tonight's home or this afternoon's homecoming game. And you know, to be honest, you can't say tension's building because tension is already built. You can feel it here. Very alive, moments away from kickoff. Wilton brought a student section. Uh, looks like they're in the pink theme, so very exciting. Yeah, this is the first Dunning game this year where we've seen a, a big visitor student section, so that just adds on to how competitive this game's going to be today with chippiness on each side. Look, I think the only game that's going to rival this one in terms of the rivalry and the camaraderie from both teams and both towns is, is maybe the Turkey Bowl Agreed, later this Greg. season. Agreed. So here we are, Wilton set back to return. Brody Hess, I believe that is unrostered on, on that other kickoff. But we've got Brody Hess back here. Tucker Stevens, the kicker for New Canaan. I, I think this afternoon his performance is going to be key because there's a very real chance this, chance this one comes down to a field goal. Yeah, Tucker Stevens, he's been he's been great this year. Uh, been able to make up the shoes of T Ty Groff, who was great last year, and it's been exciting to watch him. And here we are, moments away from kickoff here at Dunning Stadium. And this one is underway. Ball's up. Back to Hess. Hess on the return. A few Rams players dives, taken down, and thrown by Alex Benevento. Yeah, right there we saw him kind of throw the first tackle away, but swarmed by New Canaan's defense right there and got tackled down instantly. Right, and that's all you need is an arm on him. We saw that from number 24, Trey Walker at the Rams. Took a dive and slowed down Hess enough to where the rest of his teammates could come and throw Hess to the ground. You can see the American flag moving a lot. It might not be raining, but... There probably is, it looks like, a lot of wind moving around as we see the trees moving and the American flag. So that will be interesting to see with the passing game. Ball spotted on the 17. Three down in the backfield. Motion out to the right side. That's Stevenson. The slow motion drops back to pass. Number 16, Haggerty. Or Calabrese. Yeah, they kind of both just tripped there, Alex Benevento and Calabrese and didn't have anything going, but we saw, has an arm and he's going to throw it deep today. And and Dylan, that, that wasn't the starting quarterback. That was actually sophomore quarterback uh, Calabrese. Confused me for a sec here, so he checked in for the first play, um, and now Haggerty will be back in this one. Interesting play call. Haggerty in the shotgun. Trips to the right. Owen Lydon with a good blitz. Haggerty Gets one off to number nine, taken down by Connor Mazza. Connor Mazza with a huge hit. Didn't even see it coming. And Connor Mazza is a dog. There's no other way to put it. You see him brushing his own shoulder pads off there. The talent that he has and his ability. He's been a two year starter here for the Rams is remarkable. The Rams have so much depth that we have not seen tonight. I'm very excited, Dylan, to see what they have in store. Yeah, we got third and 15 here. Haggerty in the shotgun. Yeah, we're fixing that. Deuce's formation. Wilton looks to pass once again. This will be Garcia and Haggerty alone on the outside. Garcia will take him down and throw him with some force. Right there, Haggerty only had one guy to beat, but if that one guy is Garcia, he's going to take you down every single time, as we saw right there. And Wilton will no doubt punt. So... It's going to be on, on Wilton's punter to give them some field positioning and some light here because the Rams have a very talented red zone offense. They're used to converting on third down opportunities. This Rams team is nonstop on offense. Yeah, that was a quick three and out. Wilton lost yards on that possession, and now New Canaan Rams are going to have great field position, as we've seen multiple times this whole season with the defense being so dominant. McDonald back to punt here. This senior gets one in the air. That one almost blocked. It'll be out of bounds. Does not get that much distance just past that first down marker. Yeah, I think Wilton's just lucky it wasn't blocked and wasn't converted into a touchdown or right New Canaan Rams right on the goal line. So they're lucky that wasn't blocked, but still not getting that lucky with them having to be on their own 35. And now we'll get the first glimpse at Wilton's defense. A lot of two-way players here. You see Stevenson, uh, the wide receiver, now at corner. Alongside on the other side, we have Connor Flanagan. The senior going to Utah for lacrosse. Stevenson's probably going to try to get some big hits after just getting 
hit pretty bad by Connor Mazza a few plays ago. And the Rams will start out with quarterback Alex Russi. He's been the backup quarterback for most of the season, but a very talented wide receiver. Dylan Pryor to the left. They motion a lot of guys to that left side. And Russi will take this ball direct and carry it himself. He's stopped and thrown down with some force. Like you said, Gray, uh, Alex, uh, Alex Russi has been the backup quarterback, but usually when we do see him in, he is the rushing quarterback. And I think Wilton's seen that. They've done their film and they knew they were going to run it with Alex Russi, and that's why they had such a big stop right there. And we'll see if the Rams are going to air this one out. They just checked in quarterback Luke Robinson, and you see Russi now comes into that slot back position. Russi takes the snap, shotgun, handoff to Pryor up the middle. He breaks a gap, makes some yards out of nothing. And we see number 53, Bradley Boutine, with a uh, pancake on one of the Wilton D lines right there. That was a huge hit right there to give an open hole for Dylan Pryor. And Brad's a big boy. You don't want to go head-to-head -head against him. Third and eight. They go for the hard count, as always, does not work. As you said, Wilton's been watching their film. We'll see if that gives them the advantage here tonight. This is a big third and eight, because this is a hard field goal to make if they don't convert here. Luke Reed goes out in motion. The screen pass to Esposito. He is swarmed by a group of Warriors. And now we're in an interesting spot. It's fourth and six, and as the new Canadian Rams, you got to think, are you going to go for it or go for the field goal? And it looks like... They're going to be going for it here on fourth and six. I mean, look, when you got a punter like Luke Reed, there's no reason to punt it. Oh, looks like they're bringing out the kicking team, Gray. Uh, look, Tucker Steve T Stevens has the leg. You know, whether or not it's going to be consistent, he has the leg, and he's used to hitting deep field goals like that. The Rams have a lot of confidence. Once again, Coach Marinelli, on an unserving amount of confidence in Tucker Stevens, so we'll, we'll see what he can do here. And this will be a 46-yard field goal. The long attempt. Let's see if Tucker Stevens can do what he said he can do all year. And, and there's a flag on the play. That was very short. And it's going to be on the new Canaan Rams. Well, look, I mean, I don't know if Stevens had the distance on that kick. Obviously, a whistle was blown, so he slowed down his cadence a little bit. But that might make it too deep for the... It looks like they'll, they'll wave the flag. I think New Canaan Rams got a timeout off before Tucker Stevens uh, got the kickoff. And look, I love talking about head coach Lou Marinelli, and here's another example of where I get to his expertise as a coach, his timeout calling ability, his play calling, his relationships with the players. All those things contribute to his status. And great timeout by him there. Obviously, it would have been a turnover on downs if he didn't call that. And now we'll see the New Canaan Rams going for it in fourth and six instead of going for a field goal. And we'll see. I mean, fourth and six, you might as well go for that opportunity with an offense like this against a Wilton defense who hasn't been too strong this season. Robinson takes the snap. The screen pass out to the side. Dylan Pryor, will it be enough? And he'll roll. He'll be short. And Dylan Pryor there only had one guy to beat, and he would have been gone for a touchdown, but... Didn't have enough room and wasn't able to make it happen, and it will be a turnover on downs. Look, I mean, I think that's the right play call if you're coming uh, from Lou Marinelli. It's, it's obviously a tough thing if you got a great linebacker uh, taking a guy down, but the, the blocking was there, and, you know, there was at least something to work with, so great play call by the Rams. And once again, I'll say New Canes blockings look really good. As I saw Will Langford there making a huge pancake block once again, like we saw with Haggerty Haggerty drops earlier. back with a shotgun pass, the pass to a wide-open number 12, that's Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith with a great catch. Goes, goes down instantly. Looks like he tripped up a little bit, and it'll be second and one. And look, Wilton's done a great job passing uh, so far today. They've got a lot of guys open. They've, they've liked their pass game. They haven't really used the run game at all, so it's going to be interesting to see how that, how that works. Yeah, Gray, I think it's going to be a big passing game for Wilton's offense. Haggerty with the handoff to the middle. Stuffed by number 15, Simon Tachakarov. And great play there by Simon Chekharov. And that's why we're probably going to see more passing as obviously the rushing wasn't working there. And it'll be interesting to see what they call on third and three here. Look, the Rams' run defense is so strong. I don't think there's a running back unit in the state that can take them in, in terms of 
uh, dominance over this Rams defense, run defense. They've been a, done a great job this season. Obviously, Coach Sylvester with great play calls. Yeah, great. And in every game we've seen, we haven't been a, we haven't seen a big run from the opponents because of how good New Canaan's D line is. Haggerty takes the snap. This one a deep ball, oh, a short ball. Great coverage. Yeah, the pass was a little too far to the right, but it looked like he could have caught it. But great coverage there by number seven, number Michael, seven Smith. Michael Smith. Yes. We got Cooper Smith back here to return this punt alongside, uh, looks like Alex Benevento. Let's see what the Warriors can do on this punt. Obviously the last punt uh, did not go as far as McDonald hoped. Actually looks like we'll see two punt returners back here. Interesting, haven't really seen anything like this since my youth days. I mean look, I, I think McDonald's punts are so unpredictable so we'll see if the Rams will be able to return one here. McDonald puts one up, that one almost blocked but Looks like Wilton did their research and knows that it's better to kick the ball out of bounds and give either Alex Benevento or Cooper Smith the opportunity to return. Yeah, so far we've seen a dominant defensive game by both teams, just three now after three now. And, but luckily for the New Canaan Rams, they've had great field position both times, so if they can just get a few first downs, they'll have a chance at getting a field goal or even a touchdown. And look, this Rams special teams unit is amazing. If you had them in fantasy, they would have gotten you a lot of points in the last few weeks. They've had a lot of field goal blocks, and today they almost had two block punts. Robinson in the shotgun. Hand off to Cooper Smith up the middle. He hits that gap hard. He'll get a gain of five. And that's all you need, five yards running it. If you just keep doing that, they're going to steamroll on Wilton. So Cooper Smith showing his name today with that big run down the middle. And Cooper Smith's one of those guys... You know, we say this a lot, but you give him a punt return, he's going to return it for 20, 25, 30 yards, or maybe even a touchdown. And they'll keep him in here. Robinson in the shotgun, takes the snap, the handoff up the middle of the Cooper Smith once again. Looks to bounce outside, fighting a few broken tackles, but ultimately a loss of one. Yeah, there's nothing he could really do there. Right when he got the handoff, he was just swarmed by Wilton defense defenders, but... You see, he's still trying to get some, somewhere to go. He was moving around, juking out, and was able to get back to the line of scrimmage at least. Look, and they'll spot the ball third and five here. A very important third down for the Rams. They want to get an early lead. Let's see what they can do. We'll see Luke Robinson under center. Motion in the backfield. Will Langford. Robinson with the toss out to Cooper Smith. Will Langford once again with a great block. Cooper Smith goes down. Looks like there was almost a hole there for Cooper Smith, but he'll get tripped up by one of the Wilton defenders, and it'll be another big forward, fourth down, fourth and three here. Look, and you pointed out a few great blocks today. Will Langford uh, giving Cooper Smith that alley to get a few extra yards. Although ultimately it wasn't enough. I'd like to see the Rams bring out the jumbo package here. A little tush push, Eagles action for the extra three yards. And we'll see a switch. It looks like they will bring out the jumbo like you were talking about, Gray, as we love to see with Luke Reed as the leader of it. You know, this is my favorite play. I know it's yours too. Luke Reed takes the handoff, looks to the outside. He dies! Oh. He gets the first down! Luke Reed, what a play! Big dive by Luke Reed. That's very risky, you know, jumping in the air, putting your body on the line. But it's enough for the first down for the New Canaan Rams. But there will be a flag on the on the play. Well, I'm not sure if they can call anything on the dive. That's just good football. It will be interesting to see what the refs say the penalty is on. Great play by Luke Reed, though, uh, as we wait. Very athletic as he just jumps so high there over the Wilton defenders to get the first down. And as we await a call from the officiating group here, we've got a very talented group of five officials tonight. Hopefully they'll sort this thing out. But, you know, a great, great job by the Rams team to, with 10 seconds left on the play clock, change the entire formation and the entire group of guys they have in on the field. And, to get that snap off on time with precision and to hit those gaps, great job by them. 
Looks like they're shorting this one out. Coach Marinelli, very animated, is what we'll say. It looks like the Wilton line is clapping and Marinelli's starting to get into it. So I, they're moving the chains back. Well, look. And the flag will be waved off. Penalty, no penalty to play after all of that discussion. Yeah. And it looks like the Rams want to go quick. They should fix these chains here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what happened is they were probably some, some new player safety rule or something like that probably came into play, but they realized that um, ultimately what Reed did was <laughs> his choice. And we'll see the Wilson coach walk onto the field now to not let play happen as he wants to have an answer of why there isn't a penalty anymore, which yes. is respectable. So based, based off their, their hand motions there, he's one coach is recreating that dive with his finger. It's, <laughs> it was definitely some sort of player safety thing or something like that that came into play. So ultimately it looks like Coach Marinelli knows that uh, he was in the right there and that his guy did nothing wrong. And, and great job by Luke Reed for making that aggressive play as if he didn't make that, he probably wouldn't have had that first down. Yeah, great play by Luke Reed. You know, he's not a guy that's playing both sides, but when he's in, he always makes a play game after game, right. whether it's a touchdown or just a one-yard game. The Rams back in shotgun here. First down and 10, the handoff, fake handoff. This one thrown to Esposito, knocked down, great coverage. It's number 32, Harry Polito, the senior. Harry Polito looking over Esposito after that big hit to not let him catch it. And that was a risky pass by Robinson there as that could have been intercepted or just sacrificing Esposito there. Second and 10 here for the Rams. Robinson, the motion to Mike Smith, the fake handoff. That ball goes down. Cooper Smith will fall on it, regain possession, but a little miscommunication there, and great play design just didn't work out. Yeah, and now we'll see a third and 14. I had no idea where the ball went on that play, and a little confusing. And the off New Canaan offense just isn't coming together right now, as we've seen in the past. They're not really getting anywhere in the passing game. That ball bounced off the butt of running back Cooper Smith, the miss handoff. Cooper Smith goes out to the left side in motion. Will they throw the swing? Robinson elects to go deep. Mike Smith, that one batted away, nearly intercepted. Yeah, that was a ri another risky pass by Robinson as we see him throw it up there where that could have been intercepted or Michael Smith could have gotten hit really hard, hard with a big blind side there. Luckily for the new K and Rams, it was just incomplete, and now they can just punt it and hopefully give the Wilton Warriors bad field position. Look, you had Cooper Smith on the swing option, but elected not to take that. Luke Reed with the punt. This one very controlled and a great job, job by punter Luke Reed. He's, he's one of those punters that's so perfect and so precise that he knows to punt the ball with less power because he could have made that one a touchback, but he chose to get it inside. And looks like they'll spot it a lot shorter than when they picked it up. But and which I don't understand. Usually, it's a place where the receiving team or kick punting team touches it, but they'll start it at the 14. Here we go. Ball spotted on the 14. Haggerty back in the shotgun position. He takes this one. Another pass to this Wilton offense. And here comes Chisholm. Barely missing with a grip to Chakarov. Attacking Haggerty. He'll throw this one out of bounds. Almost a huge sack there by number 76, Miles Chisholm. Would have put them right on the goal line and could have gotten a safety, but... I mean, if Miles had one better step, I think he's picking up Haggerty, a lighter quarterback, and, and throwing him into the end zone for the safety. Yeah, just great play by Haggerty to get out of the pocket and just throw it out of bounds because no one was open. No back in the backfield. Haggerty drops back. He'll like to run this one. The swarm of linebackers meets him with a gain of five. Yeah, designated, des designated QB sneak there on the play, and that will be a nice five-yard gain for Wilton 
and those are plays they should keep running. You know, they've been passing it a lot, and the Duquesne Rams are going to think they're passing it, so if they just do a designated QB sneak, it will work like we saw right there with a six-yard game. Right, you know, it wasn't enough, but it was definitely what they needed. And now with this third on four field positioning, they've put themselves in a better place to convert. Hargerty takes the snap. This one, a pass. They'll go to that out route. Great coverage by Connor Maz, and they'll throw a flag for P.I. You know, that was a close one. That was very great coverage by Connor Maza, and he was on top of him, but I don't know if you call that. It was a little too close, but I do understand the, the, the flag. Right, I, I totally agree with you. It's one of those calls that can go either way, and, and I thought they weren't going to call it, but I do understand why it was called. And that will give Wilton a first down now. You see on this P.I. here, Connor Maza just lands on the top of him, and Gets a hand on his back. That's really what came down to the, the decision there from the referee. And that will give Wilton its fir their first first down today. As we've just seen a very dominant defense performance by both teams. Hargerty looks for a hard count. He takes this one out to the outside. The good read option. And Owen Leiden and Tachakarov with a group effort bringing him down. Yeah, the read option did not matter there. You could pitch it to your running back, but... Duquesne's D-line still there to make the big hit. Right, and if he didn't pitch that one, it would have been a loss of a few <laughs> yards. So great decision by him. It, it was the right option. It just didn't help the offense. Yeah. And you know, sometimes that happens. Read option, you're doing one or the other, but sometimes neither's going to work. And right there, picked the better option, but still didn't work. Already back in the shotgun. He takes this one once again, looking to pass, and under constant pressure, from this Rams D-line, the deep ball, the number 19, and it's caught. Dexter with the catch. Great play by Haggerty. He has been dominating this possession, getting out of the pocket with the O-line not being able to block it long enough for him and make that huge pass on the run. And Haggerty is a dog with that kind of speed. You, you saw Schmitz, that left defensive tackle for the Rams, chasing after him. Haggerty used his speed to get out to the get to the outside outside of the pocket and throw that ball to Dexter. And great play by Dexter to just keep running on that play. Haggerty with another option takes the right one and again a two. You know Haggerty, we've seen he's going to be able to sling it deep today. And right here we'll see the replay. Oh, never mind, no replay. And we'll have a second and nine. Second and nine opportunity, the gain of one. I guess here from Haggerty, they got two receivers out to the right side. Back to the right, Haggerty will take this one on his own. Another deep ball, this one could be intercepted and it is! Michael Smith with the interception. Fool me once, that's on him. If you can't do it again on Michael Smith and he takes away the interception that time <laughs> as he stumbles on the ground. To be honest, you know, as I said, the reason I was able to pick up on that one right there, great play by Mike Smith, is I kind of knew Haggerty's slower passing balls at one point might get picked off by this Rams secondary. When they stop going for the tackle and they start going for the ball, I think they'll get a lot of interceptions tonight. Yeah, and that was Haggerty was playing great this possession, but right there, not a pass to his attended wide receiver as it was a little low. Fitted right well for Michael Smith to get the interception there. You yet to see McGovern make anything happen. He was there on the swing pass, obviously tightly covered, so he wasn't much of a factor on that drive. Deuces formation, running back Dylan Pryor in the backfield. The Rams look for a hard count on first down. Looks like we'll see a lot of running back substitutions with Dylan Pryor and Cooper Smith. Takes the snap, the pass to Pryor. Pryor with a little bit of space, enough for the first down. Great game by him. And that's another first down for the New Canaan Rams. Dylan Pryor forced to be reckoned with as he just ran and just went out of bounds as we see the replay here. Great blocking by Ben Reagan to get the first down for the New Canaan Rams. Similar formation here. Robinson, that ball tipped. The intended receiver, Luke Reed. Because it was tipped, it was almost picked off by number six, Colin O'Neill. Luckily for the New Canaan Rams, it's only second and 10 now. Right, the senior 
linebacker doing a great job with his coverage. Barely missed that one. That could have been a huge turn of events here. And with where he would have caught it, that probably would have been a pick six. Eye formation here. The handoff to Pryor. Is it enough to find his gap? He's taken down. And now we'll see a third and 11 or third and 12 for the New Canaan Rams. And really, we'll see here on the replay, just Great. Dylan Pryor being swarmed by linebackers as 32, uh, Lorenzo Caterozolo, or sorry, Harry uh, Polito makes the tackle. Robinson about to be sacked. Can he escape it? He can. Great play from number 40, Curtis Jackson. Yeah, you know, Luke Robinson broke the first tackle. He thought he got away, but, but number 40, Curtis Jackson was able to get, wrap up his legs and make the tackle as we see here on the replay. He runs out, gets his legs, and trips him up and great, gets the sack. Great fundamental, tackle, fundamental tackling this afternoon from Jackson, and then obviously that tackle we saw in the last play, Polito. Both defenses have been dominating here today. Luke Reed back here to punt. The far punt, wow, makes it to the 50 and taken down by a swarm of Rams player led by Trey Walker. And we have 10 seconds left in the first quarter with a score of 0-0. Zero, zero. I told you, Gray, this would be a close competitive game as we've seen. What do you think the Duquesne Rams have to do in this next quarter? Look, I mean, prevail. make those small plays. Obviously, you need a strong drive. You got guys like Trey Walker making two special teams plays in that first half. So you need those little plays which add up to bigger opportunities and eventually touchdowns. The wind is picking up here. And as Wilton loves to throw the ball, that might affect them a little more than this Rams team who can rely on their run game. And here's Haggerty. Dylan, great performance so far this afternoon. Is it what you expected or more? Sorry? Is, uh, is Haggerty's performance tonight something you expected or is he doing a little more? Uh, he's been doing a little more. He had a few big passes deep and was able to convert on one of them. Obviously had the interception, but I think he's going to have a big game today. And we'll see here, Haggerty takes the snap, drops back, another deep ball, that one to a wide open, number 19, and he's taken down, he had room for the touchdown, couldn't make it, Kale Dexter, the junior. Kale Dexter just wide open on the play there, I don't know what the new Can Rams defense was doing, just leaving him wide open as we see here, no one even near him within five yards as he makes the catch, and... Luckily, Connor Mazza's fast enough to chase him down to make the tackle. Right, and if it was anyone else but Mazza, I don't know if they would have been chased down. He's fast, and you see him going for that uh, cause fumble there at the end on the tackle. So great IQ by him, but uh, just a great fundamental play from this Wilton team. That's what this offense needs to do to take down this Rams defense, uh, exploit their secondary, and make those kinds of plays. Looks like Haggerty and Dexter are going to be the duo to watch today as we've seen them make pass to pass today uh, for each other and huge gain there as we saw in the other possession before and now Wilton will have a chance to score here in the second quarter as it comes to the end of the first quarter. Right and I think obviously Dexter is their guy uh, their targeted guy tonight. We've seen a lot out of him. We've seen those deep balls being thrown to him, those short balls you know he's getting a little bit of action everywhere offensively so he's one of those guys that I wasn't sure would have that. We're going to cut down to our Sideline reporter P.J. Neville for his thoughts on the game so far. Thanks, guys. And this has been a pretty evenly matched game so far. It's still 0-0 on the scoreboard. But as you've seen, Bolton has connected on two big plays from throws from Joey Haggerty to catches from tight end Cale Dexter. The Warriors are currently moving in. They're already in the red zone. So let's see how that pans out in the second, half of play, or in the second quarter of play. Thanks, PJ. Uh, you know what? You said red zone, and, and Rams red zone defense has been strong this year, so we'll see what they can do here. Uh, you see Benevento isolated out there to the wide side. We'll see, we'll see if he gets some action. Yeah, I think New Canaan's defense will be pretty dominant in the red zone here as 
now Wilton won't really be able to throw far, throw deep passes to their players as they were able to earlier, and we'll probably see more runs or small, quick passes. So it'll be interesting to see a different play style for the offense. Ramsey line shifts to the right side. Haggerty and shotgun takes the snap. He'll take this one with another option, and he's met by a few defenders, a gain of one or two. Yeah, and that time he decided to keep it. Probably the better decision there. And it will be second and eight. Right, I mean, obviously the, the Warriors offense has ran a lot of that option, so that just shows they trust Haggerty with his decision making. He's a very talented player, and you know we, we've seen him making those types of plays all night. And look, Dylan, the wind has picked up, and the temperature is lower. Yeah, the weather is changing throughout the game as it's getting a little colder and more windy. Let's see what Haggerty can do here in the backfield. He takes the snap, pitch out to the side. McGovern's first touch of the game. Garcia chasing him behind. It won't be enough. Touchdown, Mac McGovern. And you could just tell right when he got the pitch, he was going to score. He had such an open lane to get around and score a touchdown as he was able to just use his speed and score it. Easy, nice touchdown for McGovern. And he's our player to watch for a reason. Mac McGovern with some talent. He's one of those running backs that it's tough to bring to the ground. He's a guy like Saquon Barkley who's going to break a few tackles. So Wilton's used that strength to their advantage this season. Now we'll see the extra point if he makes this. The Wilton Warriors will go up 7-0. Not something a lot of people expected to happen in this game as he does make the extra point to make it 7-0. And, and we see that the play from here. Mac McGovern. You see his speed beating defenders to the outside, and he knew he was going to score from the second he got that ball. The field goal extra point is good. Luke Ginsburg, the junior. Yeah, we're really going to need some, need to see something from New Kane's offense. They haven't been too productive here today. Gray, what do you think the New Kane offense has to do to show more progress and go down the field? and score. Look, I mean, from Coach Marinelli's perspective, there's no reason to panic. It's You're only down by one score against a team like this. Obviously a, a big rivalry, but Coach Marinelli has confidence in his players to come back and make that next set of plays. That next drive is going to be crucial, obviously, for the Rams, but I think what it really comes down to is who's leading at half, and that kind of momentum will carry over into the third. Yeah, we haven't really seen a half like this from the New Canaan Rams since their game against Shelton. And back to return, Cooper Smith and Alex Benevento. Got number 22 here kicking for the Warriors. And the Warriors lead 7-0. The kickoff is in the air. Back to receive this one, Cooper Smith. He's going to take it, and we'll see what he can do here. Changes hands with a lot of momentum. Gets to around the 23. And just an average run back right there, getting to the 23. Almost looked like there could have been a flag and play on the Rams with a push in the back, but won't be called. And it will be interesting to see what the New Canaan Rams will do here on offense, if they can prevail from going down 7-0 and come back and score and change the momentum. Right, and this Rams O-line has so much talent and a lot of size. Delicata, uh, Sibbet at center. Uh, you got Reagan as a tackle, you got uh, Keegan Noon, you got Houtine, you got a ton of huge guys with a lot of strength, and I don't think this D-line's going to be a factor here tonight. The fake handoff, Robinson, the bootleg pass, that one nearly picked off the intended receiver, Langford, a bad ball thrown to him. Yeah, number 11, Connor Flanagan, almost coming around with the interception there. Very close, but it will be incomplete. Right, and Flanagan's one of those players that has the athleticism to make a play. Uh, very talented, as we touched on before, lacrosse player. And you'll see this throw here, Robinson to the middle. That one almost picked off. He was led a little bit more. There might have been an opportunity for a reception. It's pretty much like Will Linkford had to play defense there and make sure Connor Flanagan didn't make the interception. Well, it looked like a player jumped there, but not enough. As We'll see the Rams get a new play after the hard count. Rams and shotgun up the middle to Cooper Smith. He's stuffed for a loss. Nothing Cooper Smith could even do there as right when he got the handoff, there was three Wilton Warrior defensemen ready to swarm him and tackle him as we see here on the replay. And you know, something I spoke on this before this drive, which might have announced or jinxed that, jinxed that play, was 
the fact that this Rams O line super dominant and this defensive line might not be a factor here. Now we're seeing this Wilton defensive line being a factor in this one is they just tackle for a huge loss. Yeah, as we've seen throughout this game, you know, New Canaan has been doing a lot of rushing plays and hasn't been effective. Shotgun pass to the outside. Robinson goes for the deep ball with a wide open receiver. Lankford, he brings it to go. He drops the ball. Will Langford with the drop there, and that's going to be something he wishes he could get back as it was a little bit of a tough pass. He had to turn his body around and wasn't able to come down with it as it looked like he did. We'll see here on the replay. You see on the replay, Robinson given a deep ball. It was in the right direction, and Langford had the length to go. It looks like he had it for a second, but it came down. That's a very unfortunate play. Obviously, he would have liked to have that one as... He's one of those receivers who can who can come in with those big plays. Ben, ben. Yeah, it looks like he dropped it on like the collision to the turf, and you hate to see it. Uh, could have been a big play for the New Can Rams as that was a great pass by Luke Robinson, but now they'll be punting it. Pump back to Luke Reed, and whoa, some distance on that one. He'll put it to the, the sideline there. That one will go out of bounds. Ball will be spotted at the 45. Dylan of Lankford came down with that reception and would have put the Rams in a great position to score and get past that 50-yard line. They've had a little bit of momentum and kind of just lost after this drive. Yeah, it would have gave New Can Rams the momentum they needed and also would have given them the chance to go down here and score a touchdown. But now we see Wilton Warriors where pretty much basically where the New Can Rams would have been and giving them a good chance to now score. And we'll see what Wilton can do here. Haggerty in the backfield. McGovern to his right. A lot of space to work with here. First and 10. Haggerty takes the snap. Drops back. Looking to pass once again. Met by a pass rushing unit who all misses. Haggerty with some speed. And a big block from number 12. And we'll see some chippiness on the player. I just think... A blindside hit by number 12, Ryan Smith on the play there, as he'll be talked to by the ref, probably giving him a warning, because if he does that again, he could be disqualified for the game. Look, I mean, it's it's unnecessary in the game, and see what they'll call it. Looks like it was a flag on the Rams team. They got a no. personal foul on the offense. The ref got it wrong, but he made it, uh, changed it up right there. Big blindside block there. So personal foul, blindside block. Look, you, you got to be smarter than that uh, to hit a block like that, especially you saw that that whole Rams defensive line. Watch this on the replay. Oh, we missed it. But the whole Rams defensive line was after Haggerty, and Lydon barely missed a finger on him. And to give Haggerty that kind of space, the kind of space he got is was already enough for this Warriors offense. They didn't need that extra play to put him in this poor field position. Yeah, if, if, if you're Haggerty there, you gotta be saying to Smith, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? We don't need that. And, you know, I think that just adds on to the chippiness and the aggressiveness each team's bringing here in this rivalry is they're gonna go for those hits and try to toughen up the other team. Haggerty back in the backfield, takes the snap. This one, a fake handoff. He's around to the outside and a big hit by Benevento. Benevento trying to match some of that aggressiveness still in. Yeah, he'll get two yards on the play there and it'll be second and 13. You know, that penalty really changed his possession for the Wilton Warriors here. A few new guys checking into this one defensively for the Rams. Got Michael Harris, sophomore lineman and Ryan Lakey, secondary. The shotgun pass drops back, a deep ball. Ooh, and a scary sight. They did have a wide receiver in that direction, so they won't call grounding, but on that play right there, you know, a couple people looking for that grounding flag. If you see here on the, never mind, the replay's not showing, but Haggerty was getting ready to pass it, and then McGovern was getting pushed back into him, so Haggerty had to move, and by the time he had to move, there was no one open. And Chisholm, the defensive lineman, going to continue his career playing football at Washington and Lee. That was a scary sight, seeing him put his arms up into the air like that. I 
I thought Hagrid was going to get knocked down by a ghost or something. I mean, the size of Chisholm on that yeah. play. I mean, Chisholm's like almost twice the size of Haggerty. He's a, Haggerty's a very small quarterback. Usually, you see quarterbacks above six foot, but... The pass to McGovern, the swing. Let's see what Mazza can do, and a great play by Connor Mazza. Great play by Connor Mazza there. McGovern was able to make uh, get through that tackle. He could have been gone for a first down or an easy fourth down, but now it's a fourth and eight, which is going to be hard to do, but they'll go for it here. Great play call by the Warriors. Let's see if it's enough. Haggerty looking for a hard count. No surprises there. That discipline we see from this Rams defense coming out on this possession. Oh, it looks like Wilton might not have had a, a play call ready in case the, the hard count didn't work out, but you got five seconds left on the play clock. They got to figure something out. And maybe they'll just or they'll call a timeout, looks like. Just wasting the clock <laughs> this early in the game. But, uh, yeah, Wilton will call a timeout and think it over some more. Dome, what do you think uh, – our head coach over here for the Warriors is saying to his guys right now, you got a 7-0 lead, it's a, a deep fourth down, you know, why don't they punt the ball? You know, at this point of the field, they're in a good position where they could get the first down, it's fourth and manageable, obviously not as good as they could have been if McGovern got more yards, but if they punt it, it's within 10, or they could go for it, and if they don't get it, New Canaan Rams is only on their 40, which they haven't been successful in offense, so I don't think Wilton's that scared of New Canaan's offense. And look, if, if you want to talk about punt returning, I, I think, honestly, now that I'm saying it, this Rams punt return unit in Benevento and Smith is too dangerous to give the ball, and when you have the punter that you do at McDonald, who's not getting those 50-yard punts that you know, Luke Reed's aiming for, you, you've got to consider your options. And with this field's positioning, I think I agree with the call either way. And they will drop back here. Ginsburg on the punt. They'll make a change in punters, the junior. And it looks like they will just punt it. No reason to risk it here as it's fourth and eight. It would be pretty hard to get a first down and just try to give the New Canaan Rams some bad field position. We'll see Cooper Smith and Benevento back to return here. This punt very far, and it'll be a touchback. Not what you want to see for the Wilton special teams, as you're hoping to get it within the 10, but it'll be a touchback, and New Canaan will start at the 20. Right. I, I mean, I think, to be honest, if either of those guys catches the ball, Smith or Benevento, they're going to get past the 20, 25 yard line. That, that sort of marking. So I think when you have that kind of talent in the return unit, you kind of have to take the touch back as, as a positive. Yes, sir, Juan. The win is not getting any better here today. And a lot of balls thrown from both teams. Let's see what they'll do in this drive. Prior to running back in, the handoff to him up the middle for a short gain. And we'll see like more chippiness as you watch Lyman pushing each other around after the play as we've seen over and over again this game. Right, a huge rivalry that comes with most rivalries, but you know this rivalry holds a lot more significance to both of these towns. Trips out to the right side. Robinson in shotgun prior to his left. The fake handoff, the reverse to Benevento. And with some speed, it'll be way more than a first down. Benevento rolling for 20. Great play call there. Wilton's defense did not see that coming as Alex Benevento had so much to work with on that side. And if we see here, number seven, uh, Owen uh, Theo, Theo was just not even seeing it coming. And if Will Langford could have made that block. The screen pass to Langford. Up. He's bopped with a big hit. Brought to the ground a short gain or a short loss. They'll Tackle put, by Connor Flanagan. They'll put in tight end Luke Reed here. Hoping to make something happen here. A tough drive, second and 11. Robinson in the backfield, the handoff to Pryor. Up the middle, he's got some yards. Breaks a few tackles, a gain of about six. And this will make it third and manageable. 
But with how New Kane's been playing today, it's going to be hard to get a first down here. They're probably going to have to pass it. You know, look, I, I've said this today. We said that, you know, New Canaan's known for being able to convert on first downs. They're not converting today on these third down opportunities. Robinson drops back to pass, looks the other way. Esposito, and I spoke way too soon. Esposito, the sophomore with the game. Yeah, and he caught that, and he had so much uh, yards after carry there. As When he caught it, he got 10 extra yards there and was able to get the first down for the Rams. And this is the best field position we've seen for the New Canaan Rams here today, as we see on the replay. In the replay, Robinson looks off. Replay got a little cut off there, but he looked off that first guy. The handoff to Pryor, up the middle. He breaks a few pieces of contact with a strong gain. Good gain, good decision to hurry up. Good job by Dylan Pryor there to just go up north to south and just get four, five yards on the play there. Right, that allows you to throw the ball a little bit more. You see Benevento and Rusty work into this set, so I see Luke Reed here too, Esposito. I, I, I think we're gonna see a few thrown balls. Pryor lined up to the right. Robinson in the shotgun. Takes the snap, handoff off the middle to Pryor. He'll take it, enough for the first down. And even when Pryor gets tackled, he is trucking the defenseman in front of him as if you're going to take him down, you're going down with him. Let's see if this replay works here. The shotgun snap, the handoff to Pryor, and here's that first piece of contact. Whoa! Big truck there by Dylan Pryor. I wouldn't want to tackle him after that. The Warriors with an extra player on the field. Good thing the Rams elected to figure things out and not take the hard count. The handoff to Pryor. Gain it two. And they'll just keep giving it to Pryor. He's been dominating on this possession. Every time they've been giving it to him, he's been able, able to have a su successful run. All right, it's one of those things that if you know every time he touches the ball, he's going to get a two, three, four, five yard, uh, even 10 yard rush. You know, it's one of those guys that you take that chance and you take that opportunity on at least one drive. And if his worst run today is, or this possession has been three yards, you got to be happy with that. The fake pass designed QB sneak, and Robinson gets hit pretty hard, but it's enough for the first down, so definitely worth the contact. And this is a completely different New Canaan Rams offense as we see on this possession that we saw earlier in this game as they're just going down Wilton's throat right now and have huge momentum right now. Look, and obviously a great play here from Robinson. His ability to look off that, that running back on the swing pass and take those yards. Great job by him. I think this play's momentum started from that Benevento reverse. This drive. Luke Green and shotgun to the right side. Robinson drops back to pass. He takes the deep ball to Alex Rusty, slightly overthrown a yard away from being a touchdown. Almost made it to Alex Rusty on the play there, but just a little bit overthrown as Alex Rusty was able to make space on his defenseman, but passing complete, and we'll have second down. And a good route ran from Alex Rusty. He got himself open. There was an opportunity there, opportunity there the ball barely overthrown. Dylan, the camel theme bomb squad here for the Rams. Very large in numbers today. A lot of people showing out for homecoming weekend. Which is good to see. Love the team spirit. Hopefully they stay here for the second half. Robinson in the shotgun takes this one. The fake handoff to Cooper Smith. Robinson will be sacked. Number 40, Curtis Jackson. Just no wide receivers open there on the play for Luke Robinson as he was moving in the pocket trying to figure something out but wasn't and he just got swarmed and sacked right there on the play. And Jackson came in from the, that left outside. You see him on this edge rush, beats the first blocker, takes down Robinson with ease. Now you gotta think, after going steamrolling down Wilton's throat, now it's third and 11. They're starting to choke on this possession. Huge play here, just to at least stay in field goal range. The shotgun snap to Robinson. Oh, a great vision by him. Benevento with some speed, a flag down on the play, but Benevento and Robinson with a great connection. Yeah, great play there. And depending on what this penalty is, it could give New Canaan Rams a good chance on fourth and short here. But it will be a holding call on the Rams and will push them back 10 yards. 
now I don't even think the Rams are in field goal position, Gray. I mean, look, you know, we, we, we saw that a uh, little earlier this game with Tucker Stevens on that first called attempt that they then called off because of the timeout. So we'll see. Obviously, Stevens getting ready for this kick right now. We see him starting up his kicking routine over by the temp. You got to anticipate um, that net coming into play here, obviously. You got to anticipate the fact that you might be kicking a, a very important field goal very soon. And now it looks like we'll have a big third and 22 or actually never mind or yeah third and third and, just third and deep third and deep Robinson the pass and a great ball thrown to Luke Reed I was just going to say before this possession you got to use a guy like Reed a lot more this offense has not seen enough with him but you know this definitely puts the team in field goal position and no doubt the Rams will kick this one yeah, that was a great catch by Luke Reed. Like there was right when he caught it, he was tackled, able to bring that in and keep it. Great catch by him. And now we'll see a tough field goal for Tucker Stevens here. 37 yards. Right, and 37 yards is deep, but it's not as deep as 50. So I think he definitely could have the range here, and we'll see. And Wilton's kicks up in the air. It has the distance. So when it hits the outside post that one inches away from being good the outside post leaves the Rams scoreless yeah you hate to see it it made the distance just was too far to the right I think Wilton's cheerleading got got to Tucker a little bit as they were pretty loud as like we could hear them here from the booth right that fan section was very loud you got the student section showing up for Wilton obviously that has an impact on how Stevens is gonna be able to kick and you know, same, in the same impact that icing the kicker might have on him. So, obviously, the nerves are going to get to him in a game like this. And now this game will say 7-0, Wilton. Haggerty takes the ball here back in shotgun, falling backwards. That one, no receivers looking for him. And that was a blocker, the only person in that area. So, the Chakrov looking for that. Intentional grounding flag. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they thrown it, but two minutes left to play here at Dunning Stadium, and it'll be interesting to see yeah. what Wilton can do here with two minutes left with their hurry-up offense. And it'll be intentional grounding on Wilton. I mean, look, that's a clear call. The only person anywhere near anything was number 58, who was a blocker, who was downfield. So there was no intended receiver in the area. Which is probably the best outcome for the New Cane Rams as we'll see here on this replay. Haggerty drops back and throws the ball to absolutely no one. And you can't do that, Haggerty, as uh, we hear New Cane's bomb squad cheering. And it will be second and 15. Second and 15. Let's see what the Warriors can do here with this opportunity. McGovern with very few touches today. Not likely he gets one here, though, with this deep yardage. Haggerty drops back, looking for a deep ball. There's no one, no one there. Lockdown coverage. And with the pass being incomplete, that stops the time, too, which is great for the New Cane Rams with little time left in the first half, needing a score here. We'll see in the replay here, Haggerty drops back. All receivers were covered. Who's a little lost to Chakarov there with a great defensive effort. And Haggerty just not able to do anything. Knowing he had to get the pass off or Chakarov would have came for the sack. Big third and 15 here for the Warriors. Haggerty in shotgun. A lot of receivers to choose from here. And Haggerty with a design run play, a wide open gap. Brought with contact, number 29. Ryan Leahy. Leahy, a brick wall on that play. Wow. All right, didn't have him rostered there for a sec, but Ryan Leahy with the contact. You can just see the strength and the muscle he has. The big hit brought by him to bring that, that three in out there, and that'll give the Warriors a 
opportunity to punt here and the Rams an opportunity to score a minute 50 seconds left to play in this first half and that is more than enough time especially if the Rams get a chance to return this. Yeah I mean with how Wilton's punter has been punting it he probably will punt it out of bounds once again being scared of Benevento and Smith. You hear some people chanting let him return this one. Let's see the punt in the air. That one directed out of bounds, but no, it's not going to make it. And Cooper Smith getting shoved into a corner, but it's... Whoa! And that looks like it will be a face mask or a horse collar, but the ref didn't see it, and he won't call anything on the play there. Good 10 ish yards for Cooper Smith there on the return giving the new Cane Rams good field position. And look, that's exactly what the Rams needed was that extra 10 yards from the 50 to give them some momentum there. But Cooper Smith made a play out of nothing. He was dropped back into that corner, and he did a great job, uh, as you're going to see in this replay here, of getting this ball up the field. You know, he sees, he, he gets this catch. There's a lot of blocks happening, and Cooper Smith just makes that play. And you'll see some hands on his yeah, helmet. It looks like it will be a face mask, but the ref I, wouldn't call it. You know, I think from seeing the gloves there, Oh, I hand off here to the inside. Cooper Smith. Cooper Smith with some redemption. Almost stripped there, but I think from uh, watching that replay, it looks like a hand was on the top of his helmet. He got dragged down by his neck like that. A hurry up offense from the Rams. Deuces formation. The handoff to Cooper Smith once again. His third carry and no reason not to give him. That one looked like a very clear face mask, but... This is Cooper Smith's possession as we've seen just him getting the ball one play after another, rolling down the field with one minute left. First down, crucial here for the Rams. Robinson, a dart to Reed on the inside, and look, Luke Reed's got hands like Julio Jones. He's doing a great job of securing that ball, even though he keeps getting hit on impact. Yeah, he's able to bring in these very quick, uh, small slant routes, and with guys on him. A hurry up offense once again. Cooper Smith takes the handoff. He's got a lot of distance and great ball security. He keeps getting attacked. And they got the first down, but there's only 43 seconds left here and New Can Rams need to score a touchdown. And it looks like Wilton will call a timeout here to think it over some more. And I don't know why they would call a timeout. Oh, it was because they had a player running on the field. So they actually had a player on the field on that one, and they wanted to call the timeout um, so they didn't get the flag because the clock was running. So they, they wouldn't call for time reasons. And um, obviously here the Rams are going to take the benefit from that timeout and have a little bit more time to reset here. They've got 40 seconds left in this half, and now they've got a little bit of extra time to pick a play. So here we see in the replay, Cooper Smith. You see that great ball security. They're coming for that ball. Wilton's looking for a a cause fumble here and that defensive team is just gonna say hey how can we make this stop how can we go into the halftime with the lead you know New Canaan didn't hit that field goal so you know they're up by a touchdown yeah you know at least now they're in field goal range but if you're the New Canaan Rams you're really wanting a touchdown here to, to go into half to have the game being tied 7-7 especially with them getting ball going into the second half Cooper Smith the back on the field to the left side of quarterback Luke Robinson. Robinson's going to take the snap here, the fake handoff to the inside, and he's running, trying to make something happen. A wide open, Will Lakeford! Oh, oh. and he almost had the one-handed catch. He almost brought in that one-handed snag. And I thought he, he, he almost made up for that drop earlier, but that was a very hard catch to bring in as he almost snagged it, as we'll see on the replay. And great coverage by Flanagan coming in there late, but... Robinson made a play, got out of the pocket. If Robinson just got that a little closer to Will Langford, that would have been a touchdown. Oh, and almost brought him by the fingertips. If there was no contact, that would have been for sure a catch. So credit to Connor Flanagan for saving Wilton from that touchdown. Eye formation trips to the right. They'll hand it off to Cooper Smith. He's got space. And he'll be stopped at the two-yard line. And the clock will keep running. And Dylan of New Canaan pauses the time. This is a surefire touchdown. The Rams have the that jumbo The clock is package. running. There's only 15 seconds. They have to call something. And they'll do a QB sneak of Luke Robinson. The tush push. And he won't get in. 
There's only eight seconds. And the Rams will call a timeout, looks like, as the time stops at 8.2 seconds. And look, yes, that play did get them a little bit of distance, but that I don't think was the right play call. I think you call a timeout and give yourself that 25 seconds to make something happen. We're seeing the replay of the play before. Handoff to Cooper Smith, getting that yardage, giving them that opportunity. He spotted there at the three and then almost that, getting in. And that actually resulted in the first down. So that's actually a, something we might have missed was the fact that that gives the Rams a first down. Obviously, they won't have more than two plays to run, if anything. So we'll see what the Rams do here. My, my, my vote or my bet, bring out the jumbo package. Yeah, you know, just the, the fear with running a, a jumbo package is if they don't score a touchdown, will they be able to call a timeout? No, they have zero timeouts left. So Well, look, let's not pull a Seahawks or anything or no, You here. mean a Giants, a Giants where a Sunday night football, they could have scored a touchdown against the Bills but got stopped at the one-yard line and didn't get any points as a result. And the Rams are going to bring out the tush push, the tush Eagles push. play. They're going to push Robinson into the end zone. And a timeout by Wilton to make that adjustment. I think the Wilton coaches are going to tell them to jump over the center and try to make a tackle like Troy Palomalo. I was just going to say the same thing, Dylan. Everyone has seen this play everywhere on social media. You know it's coming, and you can't stop it. And we have just been informed by our experts from the booth that there's a new rule this year, apparently, that you're not really supposed to be pushing the players, so we'll see if they can get away with it. Well, we'll see, because you can still push the pile, so if there's I a mean, pile of contact. Both teams have been pushing their guys all game today, so. It's probably one of those things that'll go on call. We'll see what the Rams can do here. And they'll still be in the touch push position. I think you give it to Luke Reed under center, but We'll see if this works out. And no, it won't be the tush push. They'll trick them. And Michael Smith will walk in for an easy touchdown. Wow. Easy money, Dylan. Mike Smith, what a dog. Everyone on Wilton was ready for him to do a QB sneak. But smart play call there to trick New Can Wilton's defense and just run across like Payne and Manning, faking it up the middle and just walking into the end zone. And dude... That entire Wilton defense bit like a rabid squirrel. They all jumped in. They all fell for the fake. And that allowed Robinson to give the ball to Mike Smith. And obviously, he had some blocking help. Great touchdown by the Rams. Tucker Stevens looking to make the equalizer after that first sort of missed field goal. And that extra point, PAT, he's had no trouble all season. Good. And now the game is tied seven. Or we'll see the replay here. And... Great play by the New Canaan Rams as that was an easy touchdown for Michael Smith. And when no you one even have your best at everything in Alex Benevento blocking, I mean, just look at how textbook of a block that was and giving the Rams that first score, Mike Smith. And there's four seconds left, but you highly doubt Wilton will be able to do anything here in the end of the first half. And New Canaan Rams will now go into the half 7-7 seven, seven with getting the ball uh, going uh, to start the second half. So they really have the momentum in their favor right now. And look, as I said earlier, the Rams were not worried. They knew they would score. They knew they would get something on the board. And, and Dylan, look, if the Rams had that field goal, the one that bounced off the pipe, they'd have the lead going into halftime. So they've been doing everything right in this one. They're going to continue to do the same thing they've been doing. And I think if nothing changes, the Rams come out on top of this one. I agree with you, Gray. It looks like the momentum is in New Kane's favor right now, but earlier in the game we did think the same thing about Wilton. So it'll be interesting to see what both coaches say at halftime and what they change up and what they keep the same. Here comes the kickoff here. From Tucker Stevens, the squib kick. Oh. The squib kick was the right idea. Burned a lot of clock there. It will only give less than a second left, which Wilton will probably just knee it and go into the half. To do anything other than that would be ridiculous, but you never know. We've seen crazier things, Gray. 
You never know. But. And here's a replay of that kickoff. A great squib kick. Actually looked like it touched the foot of uh, number 12, Ryan Smith, the receiver there. You know, maybe the Rams were hoping for another Ward scenario where it hits off the Ward, or like hit, hits off the returning player's foot and you all right? is New Cameron's ball, but obviously that doesn't happen. And that will be the half. 7-7. Seven, seven. Dylan, obviously the Rams doing everything right and Wilton doing everything right this game. It's tough. Or I, you know, I say everything. I mean most things right. They've been doing the little plays that they need. They're just one or two plays away from a few more scores. So both teams haven't been playing poorly tonight. I wouldn't say either team is, or this afternoon, has been playing poorly. Obviously some teams better than others at certain times. But Yeah, both teams have just been very dominant on defense. You know, their defenses have been able to make big stops, leaving big tackles, big hits, especially sacks. And New Canaan Rams, we've seen big interception by Michael Smith. We'll be back to you guys with a reading of sponsors after this halftime ceremony of Bob Vander Hayden, the voice of the Rams for the last 65 years. Signing off. See you in a little bit. Bob is one of the traditions that separates New Canaan High School from all other schools in the FCI. For 24 years, he was more than the voice of the Rams. He was my friend. From football games to banquets, senior award picnics, and Hall of Fame ceremonies, we could always count on Bob Vanderlyn whenever we needed him. Since 1958, young athletes have grown up with the dream of running out onto the field to Bob's legendary introduction and dreamed of hearing their name being called over the PA system. For 65 years, Bob has given his time, his talent, and his voice to this town, representing New Canaan with grace, class, and dignity. He embodies everything we value in the spirit of athleticism, competition, and sportsmanship. Thank you, Bob, for all you have done for this program, this school, and this town. It is now our honor to turn the tables and introduce his name Ladies and gentlemen, down on the field, here comes the one and only Voice of the Rams, Bob Vander Hayden! Official citation introduced by Representative Tom O'Day 
Representative Lucy Dayton, Senator Ryan Fazio, Representative Kitty Denning, and Senator C.C. Mahar. It is hereby known that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Bob Vanderhaven in recognition of your unwavering dedication and commitment to New Canaan High School as the public announcer for the Rams football games, you began your illustrious career in 1958 with only a portable PA system and a couple of speakers. From there, you continue to call the games out as the voice of the Rams for the next 65 years. Well done and best wishes in all of your future endeavors. The entire membership of the General Assembly wishes you the best. God bless. Okay, next we have another proclamation. This is from the town of New Canaan. Uh, our presenters uh, include Steve Carl. He's the chairman of the town council. And then we have former Board of Education Chair and Republican candidate for selectman, Deanna Carlson, and Board of Finance member and Democratic candidate for the first selectman, Amy Carroll. And I'd also like to thank our superintendent of schools, Brian Lutze, for being here with us today. I had, I had the pleasure of working with this guy in the booth for a few years and saw firsthand behind the scenes what an amazing job he did. So I'm here on behalf of the 20,000 residents of New Canaan to read this proclamation. Town of New Canaan, whereas Bob Vander Aiden is native of New Canaan and has dedicated 65 years as an announcer for New Canaan High School football. Whereas Bob was a creative and innovative high school student who made a public address system from scratch and has launched his football career and in the press box came from home, away from home, and whereas Bob is always and will be a memorable voice of the Rams and New Canaan football and has given us all so much to cheer about. For 30 of the 65 years, Bob faithfully made the long drive from Scranton, Pennsylvania to New Canaan to announce the games to his hometown. Whereas Bob has given his spirit and his time to this community, including the emceeing of the New Canaan High School Sports Hall of Fame, and it left an indelible mark on the hearts of our residents. Now, therefore, on behalf of First Selectman Kevin Moynihan and the incoming Board of Selectmen of the Town of New Canaan, we urge residents to join us in celebrating Bob, and we bid him farewell with hearts full of gratitude and wish him the best in the next game in the field of his life. Congratulations, Bob. We love you, New Canaan, Connecticut. You're the best. So the truth of the matter here with Bob is it's sort of like the Wizard of Oz. Bob was the voice, but there were people in the box that were feeding Bob all the information. So Carol and Dave Harvey, I don't know if you're here today, but thank you for all that you did. And Tony Krzyznik, who's here. Tony knows the down and distance because he runs the clock. So that's how Bob always knows the down and distance, to be honest with you. So Tony has a little something for Bob to commemorate his service. 65 years, Bob. Thank you so much.
words of the great New York Yankee first baseman, today I feel like the luckiest man in the kingdom. You don't get 65 years of something without a whole lot of help. And as Jay just mentioned, Tony and Carol and Dave Harvey and I were together for 30 years in that booth, and we had more fun than we ever should have had. It was a great, great, great time. I want to thank the New Canaan Board of Education, our athletic department, the booster clubs. Parents make such a big difference in this program with our booster clubs. I want to especially mention Vinny Iovino could not be with us today. He's down in Florida, great athletic director. And Jay Egan, thank you so much for trusting me with this microphone. When I write my emails, at the bottom of the email I have a little slogan. And it says very simply, will it matter that I was? Will it matter that I was? Apparently it has. Thank you. And let's do it one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, down on the field, here come the Rams. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. I want to introduce somebody to you who has been with me almost as long as I've been doing the games. My wife, Elaine Hemp, ran it. Mike. Here we go. Class of 1960. Class of 1964. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Elaine. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give one more big hand for the voice of the Rams, Bob Vanderhagen.
And welcome back here to the second half of play. The score tied 7-7. Both teams 4-1 and one, as you see there in our score graphic. Dylan, the game is as close as we anticipated. Very exciting. Yeah, it's a great game. Both teams going at it, like we said in, like in, well, before the game started. It's going to be a big defensive game still, as we saw in the first half. And both teams want this game really bad. Right, we're going to first take a moment to thank our sponsors. So we'll get that to you here. This game is sponsored by our NC Rams All Sports Booster Club Platinum and Gold sponsors. We'd like to thank our platinum sponsor, Anderson Kenny Architecture, a full service practice that encompasses a range of commission residential and commercial projects. Each project's a thoughtful collaboration tailored for clients and their needs. The outcome's highly personal, constructed with intention and integrity. We'd also like to thank platinum sponsor, Dr. William Fessler of Fessler Family Dentistry, the dental office for your entire family's dental needs. At William Fessler Family Dentistry, smile, you're in good hands. Platinum sponsor, Frangione Engineering, planning on putting a pool or addition to your house? Are you having drainage issues on your property? Frangione Engineering can help you find a solution. Platinum sponsors and NCHS alumni, Leo and Steve Carl of Carl Chevrolet, who have been proud supporters of local athletic programs for generations. The dealership has been serving Fairfield County since 1927. Their team's ready to assist you with all your automotive needs. Platinum sponsor, Manfredi Jewels. Manfredi Jewels, your local official Rolex jeweler, is excited to continue carrying the finest jewelry and watch brands and welcome the New Canaan community to their newly renovated store this fall. Platinum sponsor, Renaissance Partners, a family-owned and New Canaan-based residential building and remodeling company serving all of Fairfield County. Platinum sponsor, Walter Stewart's. Walter Stewart's Market has supported NC Rams Athletics and the entire New Canaan community for years. Walter Stewart's is your fresh local market. We'd also like to thank you to our gold sponsor, Performance Optimal Health, who proudly supports all New Canaan Rams athletes in their 2023 to 2024 seasons. Their team helps clients achieve their health goals through exercise, recovery, nutrition, and stress management. They offer their congratulations to all teams competing this season. Again, a big thank you to all of our sponsors. The NC Rams All Sports Booster Club supports all New Canaan High School athletics. Go Rams. Wilton is now taking the field. Boos come from the New Canaan student section. This game, 7-7, seven, seven. I, I, I think, to be honest, a little closer than some of the New Canaan fans might have expected coming off of last year's blowout victory. Um, but obviously, it's going to be one of those matchups that could go either way on any given day. And obviously, with Wilton's strong performance against Staples, you know, it's not something to be crazy about. And here come the Rams as they take the field. Bob Vanderhagen's famous saying, here come the Rams. Uh, he was honored at halftime for his 65 years of PA service. Um, so a very impressive thing out of him. 65 years, Dylan, that is remarkable. Um, and for the last whole bunch of those, uh, could be close to 20 years, he was driving here uh, a few hours from Pennsylvania for every single Rams home game. So um, we're now going to take it down to our sideline reporter, uh, Ryan Bell, for his thoughts on the first half defensively. Right here, right here. Thanks, guys. And so far, the story of the first half has been the defenses from both sides, starting with Will and Tops around both midfield zone, holding New Canaan to only seven points and a missed field goal. As for New Canaan, they looked a little bit sketchy in the first quarter, but picked it up big time in the second quarter, having a big interception, and Wilson only had seven points. After New Canaan's offense, they're going to need to establish more of a ground game, as it is very windy out here, so the pass game might not work as well. We'll have to see what they do in the second half. Gray, Will, back to you guys. Dylan. <laughs> and Dylan, it is, it is Gray and Dylan uh, up here in the booth. Uh, but thanks, Ryan. As you said, obviously the wind, a big factor in today's game, uh, a little more than we anticipated, to be honest. We thought the rain might be a factor, but this wind has affected the throwing game for both teams um, as a lot of balls have been thrown offensively. Both teams have been passing it out a little more than they're typically used to, so that's great to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second half. You know, in the beginning, we saw the defense being very dominant, and then later in the last few minutes, the offenses were coming to life. So I do think there will be a lot more scoring in the second half, but I do think 
the defense will have a big role once again. Right, and Dylan, with your New Canaan's coach, Marinelli, what are you telling your guys right now getting ready for this second half of play here? You know, I'm just I'm telling my team to do what they did in the last five minutes of the game or the last five minutes of the first half. If they can just replica what they were doing then, they'll, they'll go on to win this game. And look, I completely agree with you. Uh, when you have a, a phenomenal drive, as the Rams did at the end, if you just tell them to keep doing what they've been doing and do the same things, uh, make the same plays, you know, you need the same guys stepping up. And if you're the Rams, you got a lot of depth and you got a lot of choices. You got a lot of running backs you can use in any given drive. So it's going to be very interesting to see which running backs come in for the Rams, who gets subbed in, that kind of thing. Great. Speaking about depth, I think that does have a big role also with. New Canaan Rams having so many more players than the Wilton Warriors and able to make substitutions on both sides to keep their players not so tired and keep them rested on the sidelines so they can go in and play 100%. And the impact of that definitely shows in the second half, so we'll see how much that has impacted this game here. The kick is there. That one touched by Mike Smith. He'll just go down on it. Not great field positioning. Yeah, a little weird there on the scoop kick, but luckily for the Rams, they were able to still get the ball and nothing fishy happened there. Now, look, something interesting, you, you, you might be able to tell me if I'm wrong, but it looks like they've done this earlier in the game, too. Whenever it touches the guy on, on maybe a kickoff or something, even though he really went down at around the 22, they're giving him that field positioning of when he first touched it. Yeah, I don't know, Gray, why they're doing that. Maybe it's because of where their body position is. Uh, couldn't tell you exactly, but we'll just play on. It looks like they'll put Cooper Smith in the backfield here. Trips to the left. The handoff to Smith up the middle. He's stuffed. No yards on the gain there. Just no hole. Just nowhere for Cooper Smith to go, and it'll be second and ten. Second and ten here. Some substitutions for this Rams offense. Will Langford checks off the field. A big thing about New Canaan's uh, possession touchdown is their O-line giving holes for Cooper Smith as they'll need to do in the second half. Let's see the pitch to Cooper Smith and a flag down. Wonder what that'll be. Most likely a holding call. Holding on the Rams. That'll affect them. Make it third and long, long. Yeah, that's just not what you want. Even with the holding, there still was nowhere for Cooper Smith to go. New Canaan's O-line has to figure out what to do. Well, looks like there's a little more. Yep, yeah, there's the holding call. And the penalties. It will be declined because them declining, it makes it third and ten instead of second and ten. Let's, let's take another look at this play here, see where the hold might have been. Um, looks like it might have been on that far side, so I, I don't think it really impacted the distance Cooper Smith got, but regardless, they'll have third and eleven. Drops back to pass. Robinson to Benevento. Speed Demons brought down, and so and is fumbled. the ball. Looks like the new Canaan Rams were able to fall on it. Well, look, when you get Benevento the ball like that in the middle of the field, uh, you, you got to take your chances on a play like that. A great play call. You know, a lot of times Benevento is able to find a gap and break up field for 10 yards, but there he wasn't, and the ball actually came out. So credit to Delicata for falling on that and saving the Rams' possession and giving them this punt. And just like that, the Rams will be punting it now, not the way you want to start the second half. They had momentum going into halftime, and just like that, they shatter it. And look, the last Wilton win over New Canaan was in 2021 uh, when the Warriors beat the Rams that year, 20-17. to It was their first win against New Canaan since 1995. The punt down, they're calling poison. Rams staying away from it. Not sure what uh, Stevenson was doing, but... Almost tapped into it. Could have saw what the USC Trojans did last week where they were just trying to throw that one returner into the ball. <laughs> I mean, look, I would have liked to have seen that, but I think in high school that's for sure a penalty. You'll just see a little replay here on this punt. Uh, Luke Reed, obviously a, a, a talented punter, and gets this one in the air. A lot of height to give his players some time to get to the ball, and I guess they'll just call poison and let that one die. And here we go, first in 10. The opponent's 46 is Wilton Haggerty in shotgun. 
Takes the snap, the handoff to McGovern. And stuffed by Chisholm and Garcia. Stuffed. Yeah, the run game, Gray, has just not been there for Wilton today. If they, they have to really just focus on their passing game as that's what's been successful, successful for them today. And just running just like that, that's what it's been like today for them. And Thanksgiving come early with a stuffing from Chisholm. <laughs> He's a, he's a talented defensive lineman, so it's always great to see him get a hand on a carrier. Wilton, three wide receivers out to the left. McGovern to the strong side. Haggerty and shotgun, takes the snap. A pass to a wide an open Stevenson, number nine. And this will make it third and three now. Very, very much more manageable than third and ten. And this will be a big play here because if Wilton gets the first down, they have a chance to score. Finally giving the ball to McGovern on the, the play before it gets taken down. And Wilton goes back to what they've had success in the first half with in, in terms of their pass game. And they saw the effects of that on that pass. Haggerty in the shotgun. I formation. Takes the snap. The fake handoff to McGovern. Haggerty keeps it. Can he bounce outside? No, he can't. Brought down by Chisholm. And they'll do a little bit of a read option there, but it will not work out. And it'll be fourth and two. If I was Wilton, I would go for it here, Gray. What would you do? Look, when you got a punter that's not really punting all that well, you might as well go for it. You got field positioning like this, and I would have liked to see them go for it. And it looks like they will bring out the punting team. Look, obviously that's the, that's the by-the-book decision, but I don't know. In a game like this, you can't go wrong with the decision. To be fair, the Rams' run defense is, is strong. You're not getting past those three guys up front, so that probably was the right call. Though the thing is, if you do punt it to Benevento or Smith, they could return it back to where the ball would have been anyway. Ginsburg right to Cooper Smith's direction. He stumbles and... He'll be brought to the ground. And he'll just catch it and have no gain on the play there. The Rams will start with terrible field position. I mean, look, if you're Cooper Smith, do you let that one go for the chance that it could be a touchback? I, I don't know. That's a close call. You obviously don't want to get pinned inside the one, but look at the result of what happened. He's now pinned in the four. I don't know, Gray. It's a tough play, but I think I would just let it go because the risk of maybe even dropping it would be... Uh, factored into it, but obviously Smith was able to bring it in, but personally I would probably just let it go, but it was a very tough decision. And we'll see what the Rams are going to do here. They bring out quarterback Luke Reed in this jumbo set the second time we're seeing it today. A surefire few yards on this play. Luke Reed takes the handoff and he is brought down. That's the first time I've seen jumbo not work gray. Wow, Wilton's defense is looking really good in the second half right now. And, and Wilton, I, I think part of that is due to any time the Rams run this set, you know exactly what the play is. Obviously, they've got some, some hidden tricks up their sleeve, but you, you know exactly what the play is going to be, so you can game plan for that. And we'll see it again, like you said, Gray, hidden tricks. Maybe we'll see one here. Luke Reed able to make something happen, but it won't be enough for a, a manageable third down. So... I think this is, this is maybe a potential situation where the Rams bring out a little tricky play. You know, they obviously have a ton on their playbook. Let's see what they'll use. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do here because I doubt they'll pass it being scared of the safety. So it'll be interesting if they just run it with Luke Reed again or try to bring some trick play to this. And there's Luke Reed. He'll just hit the gap on that left side. I just think it's too easy to game plan for when you know what the same the play is going to be, three plays in a row. And, and they'll bring out the punt, punt team. That's a quick three and out for the Duquesne Rams. They really haven't been successful at all in the second half. Look, I, I don't know about that play call, Dylan. I, I don't know about this whole drive, you know, putting it in that, that jumbo package. You know, obviously you, you want to try it once to give yourself a little space from the goal line, but I think once you have that space, you got to throw the ball. Yeah, I agree with you, Gray, even though when it's especially not working out the first and the second time. But the fear is of a safety. You know, those two points in giving them the ball is not worth it. And Luke Reed, the punt comes off his foot weird. 
was not what the Rams were looking for. And you know, you, you see him wait a little longer to punt that one, almost maybe seeing if he's got a gap to try and keep it or something like that. But obviously Luke, a very talented punter, missing up a little bit on that one will give the Warriors a, a breath in the second half. And this will give Wilton great field position, starting on the Rams' own 25. Warriors will take over first and 10 from the 25. 25 yards is all they need for a touchdown on this drive. Rams defense in a crucial moment here. Fake handoff comes to the backside, met with Owen Leiden. And Haggerty will just throw it out of bounds as he gets pressured. Good idea from Haggerty. He had Owen Leiden coming around that, that left edge with a lot of power and a lot of speed. And, you got to get rid of that ball or do something with it before one of those edge rushers gets to you. Yeah, he just almost got there, but not close enough, and it will be second and ten. Second and ten, the Rams so far doing what they're trying to do. See if they send anyone here. Haggerty drops back to pass. Great edge rushing. Garcia coming up a little bit. This ball in the air, over the head of Bob for the touchdown. And that just looked too easy there. There was three New Canaan defenders and he was still able to come down with it. You gotta, you can't let that happen if you're the New Canaan Rams. Luke Umfret. Great play by Wilton. Haggerty kind of just, kind of being like Joe Burrell, just throwing up to Jamar Chase and hoping he comes down with it and that's what happened right there. Great catch on the play, and now 14-7 if they make this extra point uh, for the Wilton Warriors. The senior to junior, or the junior to senior connection there, working in the favor of the Warriors. And they'll kick this one, that extra point, no good. He missed to the right, that's hard to do in an extra point, Dill. Yeah, never mind, it will be 13-7, not 14-7, with five minutes left in the third quarter. Now this is when the New Canaan Rams offense has to show something. They can't keep giving Wilton this great field position. And look, you, you look at the score in this one. Obviously, you touched about this after half. Having that depth and seeing how that plays out, this is when that's going to come into play. We're going to see if the Rams are more conditioned, they have less guys playing both sides of the ball, and how that's going to impact the overall outcome of this one. Both teams take the field here. Rams in need of some momentum. Benevento here, set back to return with Cooper Smith. Wilton has used three different players to punt and kick today, which is very interesting. Typically you just see you know, one punter, one kicker, but I guess Wilton having depth at one position. And we'll see a little bit of a switch, which is interesting, putting more guys on the left side. I mean, usually it just means they're going to kick it to that one direction but, and they kick they it didn't. to the other direction. That makes not that much sense, but it will just be a touchback, so it won't really matter. I mean, look, sometimes, <laughs> so look, I know we're, we're both sitting here confused. It's easy to be confused here uh, in that situation, but, you know, I, I, I think sometimes coaches look for something and then it, you know maybe it doesn't happen maybe the kicker doesn't get it off the way they wanted to but actually the coach hugging that kicker right there so the touchback was everything they were hoping for on that It'd be very interesting to see what the Rams can do here because obviously the possession before it it was just tough they were had terrible field position did not want the safety so now they can actually run their regular offense Cooper Smith the go-to back right now motion Alex Rusty the fake pitch Robinson dishing it off to Cooper Smith for some yardage. The risky play, throwing that ball right there, but it worked out in the favor of the Rams. Yeah, it looked like he was just going to throw it on the ground, but somehow ends up in Cooper Smith's hands and is able to break a few ta tackles as the dog he is and get one yard on the play. They don't call him Coop Dog Smith for nothing. The handoff, the fake handoff, the throw to Luke Reed, the tight end. That's a, that's a short game, but 
puts them in good field positioning, some of the best they've had of this half. Yeah, and we'll have a third and four. Them needing this first down to get some momentum on their side after just letting up a touchdown. And we'll see what the Rams can do here offensively. Benevento wants to get worked into the mix here. You see him eager to get into this game on the sideline. The handoff up the middle to Cooper Smith. He swarmed and brought back for a huge loss. And it doesn't matter how good Cooper Smith is. There's just nothing he could do there. New Canaan's O-line has to block for him. And he was just swarmed right when he got the handoff. Nothing he could do. Right, that can't keep happening. This Rams O-line started off the game strong, making a few mistakes. And those few mistakes are going to lead to plays like that that give the Rams awful field positioning. See what Reed can do on this punt here. That punt in the air. Great punt by him. A lot of distance and a lot of Rams near it. And they'll bring down, I believe, an unrostered player on that return. Dylan, this Rams defense, you know, I, I think we, we kind of don't credit them enough for their ability to to cause turnovers and fumbles and, and stuff like that. We haven't seen any of that today except for the interception from Mike Smith. What do you think they need to do on this drive? Pretty much uh, they've been unsuccessful on Haggerty throwing these deep passes and them being huge gains. That's how they've scored both of their touchdowns. So if they can just stop these big plays with these huge passes, then they'll be successful and win this game. Haggerty drops back another deep pass. That one overthrown the intended receiver, Ryan Smith, the senior. Maz has been pretty good today. You know, he had that one pass interference earlier, but besides that, he's had some big tackles and looked really good. Right, and he's one of those guys that he might not be a big six foot two, you know, outside player, but he's a quick, fast corner who's going to get to the, you know, whoever's the intended receiver is and make a play. You know, he'll, he'll chase a guy down and prevent a touchdown, as we've seen. Smith in motion. Comes across Haggerty and shotgun. Takes the snap, drops back, another deep ball. Chisholm with his hand in the air, and his hand on the hips, thrown to the ground. Miles, Chisholm. Yes, yes. And the D-line is so excited after that. Get, Haggerty had so much time in the back, and eventually he's going to face reality and see the D-line. And we'll see. Grounding. Grounding. Which was needed because obviously he would have been sacked if he didn't throw that into the ground. Great pressure from Miles Chisholm. Gets his hand up in the air to block the pass and then realizes Haggerty's not going to throw it because once again there's that fear factor of Miles' wingspan getting up into the air and then sheds his guy to the ground with ease and then takes down Haggerty. That is everything the Rams needed. The Warriors in more than horrible field positioning. This is going to be... A very, very long first down. Over 20 yards. This is 28, third and 28. Miles Chisholm. My God. I don't even know what you do here on third and 28, Gray. I mean, look, you throw the ball, well, not deep, but, ooh, some contact there from Trey Walker on the outside. Him getting some snaps in this one. That'll bring out the punt unit. Good, good possession from New Canaan Rams defense, getting a quick three and out, and now giving the Rams a chance to have good field position on offense and hopefully have success now. We'll see here on this replay. The trips to the right side. Haggerty takes the snap, hits that quick screen pass. To Ryan Smith, and he's taken down. Set back to punt here, Ginsburg. Almost blocked once again by Chisholm. That ball rolling, Cooper Smith loves. Oh. Pick those up and his helmet comes off. A dangerous hit from number 10. Yeah, Joey, yeah. or not number 10, sorry. Number 21, Ethan Bailey. That was a risky time to snag the ball knowing the guy is, le is one yard away from you, ready to tackle you. If Cooper Smith just had a little bit more speed, maybe he could have gotten around, but it would have been very tough. 
And, and look, that just shows who Cooper Smith is as a player. He's going to pick up that ball nine times out of ten, coming towards him, knowing the risks of what he's about to do. This is the Rams' best field position here today. Deuce's formation here. The handoff to Dylan Pryor up the middle. He's snagged. This O-line needs to get a grip. And Pryor hops off with a leg injury. And once Not a, good for the Rams. And once again, just nothing Dylan Pryor could do there like Cooper Smith, the uh, previous possession. Just getting tackled right away. We've got some live scores for you guys. Darian is up 27 to 14 against Ludlow in the first quarter. It's very close. The Rams beat Ludlow, I think, 49-0, and then they forfeited. So the swing pass to Cooper Smith, though, when he's brought down a huge tackle from Owen Theo Herodis. And now, kind of like what Wilton did this previous possession, now it's happening to the Rams. Third and deep. More around the FCAC last night. Greenwich took down Trumbull 42 to 0. A huge statement win. Let's see what the Rams can do here. Cooper Smith getting a lot of action in these last few plays, so they'll probably give him a rest and go for some deep routes. And the shotgun, Robinson heads out to the right side, looks for Reed, has the option, wants to go deep, and Esposito. Drops that one short. Of, could have been a first, short of the first time. Yeah, but the thing is, if he did catch it, it would have made it fourth and two, giving New Canaan the opportunity to go for it. But now they'll have to punt it. And look, just great, great job by quarterback Robinson um, for telling his receivers where to go. You saw him pointing in the direction. Uh, wanted Luke Reed to get a little more upfield. Wanted Esposito to come down, which he did, and that ball was just thrown incomplete. The can Rams really have to figure out what is going on wrong in offense and fix it because nothing's been successful. It's a offense strong punt half. from Reed. Take it down by Trey Walker. Trey Walker, special teams player of the game. His third takedown. Now Wilton will start at the 30. Trey Walker having the game of his career so far. That's three special teams takedowns. He's He's definitely going to be a name. We're saying a lot more. Is he's going to get more, more time on the field. McGovern in the backfield. I formation. Trips to the left side. Haggerty in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Hand off to McGovern. And brought down. No surprises there. That's number 52. Walter Schmidt in the tackle. Second and nine here. Once again, the running game is not working for Wilton. They should just stop running and just just keep passing it because passing has been very successful for them. And look, I, I think they're definitely going to do that. You know, you, you can't hit those two corners. Maz and Benevento are going to lock down coverage. But where the Rams have struggled this game is uh, really in that, that safety spot. That's where they caught that tight end ball and kind of more towards getting those middle linebackers to pick up coverage. And then, Catching over them. Drops back in the shotgun. Haggerty with the deep ball to Benevento side. And a great gain of about six, but it won't be enough for the first down. Yeah, now they'll have a nice third and two to say. And it'll be interesting what they call here because obviously the running hasn't been working, but they might just run another little quick five yard out like they just did right there. Right, and that's all you need. Benevento is obviously prepared to guard the deep ball. That's why he was dropped back a little more in coverage. So the Rams are definitely going to have more towards the line of scrimmage as Coach Silvestri is going to make those adjustments. And it's taking Wilton a little bit. Well, they're going to run out the quarter here. We got eight seconds left in the third. That surprised me, to be honest, looking up at the clock and, and seeing eight seconds. I feel like this third quarter has gone by uh, with a lot of possessions. And you know, it's hard to believe with all the passing that this is a, a faster game, per se. So. The Rams are down. Let's see what they can do here. And they'll go into the fourth quarter now. Wilton Warriors up 13-7 to the New Canaan Rams. And look, as, as far as bad situations go, I think this is a pretty good bad situation to be in for the Rams. All you need is a touchdown, and Stevens is 
automatic on his PATs. He hasn't missed an extra point this season. So, you know, obviously with a kicker like Tucker Stevens who's going to get that extra point, you know, that, that's a valuable commodity in games like this when all you need is that score to tie it and then the extra point to win it. Yeah, and with how successful New Kane's defense has been, if, if the Rams can just get one touchdown, they can lock off Wilton Warriors' offense and win 14-13 maybe. And, and look, the Rams have so many plays up their speed and so many different offensive sets. I, I don't know how players memorize all that um, in terms of the, the quantity that New Canaan has, but we'll see what Coach Nugent decides to go here with the offensive coordinator um, and, and, and what kind of plays he'll put into this drive because this is a must score uh, drive or, or, or must gain momentum drive. I couldn't agree with you more, Gray. It'll be interesting to see what Wilton calls here on third and two. I mean, look, third and two, you got to go for the old fashioned QB sneak, maybe some trickery. Or maybe a little out route. <laughs> Five yard out. I guess we'll find out in a few seconds, Gray. Well, it doesn't look like they're going to throw the ball to those two wing guys. He's got one on one coverage and pistol formation in the backfield. I think they'll give that one to McGovern after they go for the hard count. And no surprise. And read to the option. Outside. Double read option. And what a play by this Rams defensive unit. Not even close. Like I said, the rushing game has not been dominant at all for Wilton. I mean, look, there were, right there. look, the play was designed with an option, but realistically there were three options. And none of them were an actual genuine good option. You just, have, show, right. <laughs> just, just showing this Rams defense. You have McGovern up the middle. He would have been, like, hit guy, hard. Let's go! Uh, you had Haggerty coming to the outside. He would have been clean in the head. He already had hands on him, and then he tosses that one to the outside for a loss. Now this will lead to Wilton punting it and give the Rams another chance. Ginsburg Score. up in the air. The ball turns into a great punt. Cooper Smith picks it up and once again throws it the ground. You know, if he was going for the that run, he probably should have picked it up a sec earlier. But to be honest, not much he could have done there. So yeah. making sure that ball didn't roll back was definitely the best decision. Now, with 11 minutes left in the game, the Rams need a touchdown. Here's a replay of that punt. Ginsburg once again almost blocked by Chisholm. I don't think we've seen a punt today that hasn't almost been blocked by Chisholm. You know, Cooper Smith picks that one up and just gets taken down. The Rams might only get a few more opportunities, so every offensive possession is crucial here in the fourth quarter. Let's see what the Rams will do here. First and ten on their own, 25. Robinson, handoff to Cooper Smith to the outside. Lost. Ball carried by Cooper Smith there. It looks like we'll have some substitutions here. Alex Rusty checking into the game at receiver. Second and 12 here. Connor Flanagan on the tackle defensively. He's, he's having himself a game. Making a lot of key plays. Robinson in the backfield takes the snap. He's got some pressure, but he's also got a man open. Cooper Smith making something oh out of God. nothing. Oh, and it'll be enough. The 50, the 40, the 30. Can he be brought down? He can't. One Cooper Smith. Be, and he'll, he'll be called out of bounds. He was able to break the tackle, but will be called out of bounds on the play. Crazy catch by Cooper Smith and just had blockers and was able to run. Well, he had one guy to beat, and that one guy was able to get him out of bounds. Wow. Dylan, that one took us off of our feet. A very slow pace, paced fourth quarter of play so far here, and that play just heightened the intensity and the adrenaline of everyone in the stadium. Big play by Cooper Smith there. So close to being a touchdown. Lone is very lucky that was not a touchdown. Yeah. Couldn't see it from here, but it must have been like inches away from staying in bounds. Robinson, the shotgun, the handoff up the middle to Thomas Garcia. He's got a lay in, and it'll be a gain of 13. Another first down for the New Cane Rams, and they're just steamrolling right now. 
This is exactly what they wanted, and th they're doing it now. And we said depth earlier in this game. New running back, Thomas Garcia, the middle linebacker. And we see, oh, it's the option, and he took the right one to the outside. Connor Flanagan with the big hit on the quarterback there. A, a missed block from Esposito, but great read, great option taken by Robinson for the game. Yeah, great read option there. Maybe Wilton should take some pointers on that, but we'll have second and seven now. And the Rams need a touchdown to tie this one up or to take the lead with the extra point. The handoff to Garcia, the power runner, with a short game, but a manageable game. Garcia's a powerful running back. You know, he'll just lower his head and shoulder into anyone in front of him as he'll get three or four yards on the play there. And look, I, I, I think if you're the Rams right now, you're looking to either get Garcia the ball or maybe try to make something happen with the, play, the, the pass. You gotta be thinking touchdown here though on third and four. Shotgun pass, they'll throw it to a... That's a P.I. Clear P.I. on Luke Reed. Obviously, if Luke Reed's not catching the ball, it was probably pass interference because odds are he's getting open and he's securing it. I was about to say that, Greg. The only way to stop Luke Reed is by holding him or doing some type of penalty, as we see right there. And this will put the New Canaan Rams first in goal. Luke Reed is the most underutilized player on this Rams offense in terms of touches. I think he should have triple the quadruple the amount of carries and receptions that he does. And if you target the guy, he's going to catch everything you throw in his direction. Agree, Gray. Whenever he is targeted, he makes a play. And why he doesn't get enough, I don't know. But now we see first and goal because of Luke Reed. And if you're a coach, seeing a player dive for three extra yards and it gets you a key first down, you got to give him more opportunities. Russi at quarterback. Takes this one, the direct, he's gonna keep it. A good game, and second and goal. He'll lower his shoulder so he gets two or three extra yards on the play there. Making it first and, or second and goal on the two yard line. Robinson's definitely the quarterback. Or sorry, Rusty's definitely the quarterback you want in terms of that run game and you give him the ball on his own, you know he's gonna get some yards. But now they'll put Luke Robinson back in. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left to play here. The Rams looking for a Wait. touchdown. Oop. Robinson under center. The handoff to Garcia. Touchdown, Thomas Garcia. Like I said earlier, he's going to lower his shoulder and like he did right there, trucking guys ahead of him and scoring a touchdown to now tie up the game at 13-13. Tucker Stevens having a chance to take the lead for the New Canaan Rams now. Thomas Garcia doing his job offensively defensively, the captain, the senior, the leader. He, 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 he can do anything. Yeah, he's been making big tackles on defense and scoring touchdowns on the offense. He's been a playmaker on both sides here today. And Tucker Stevens needs to hit this PAT. A must kicked field goal. PAT. And this is when special teams becomes a huge factor that favors New Canaan heavily as their special teams has been very dominant over others in history. And not this time, it will be blocked, the extra point. And a heart-stopping play for the Rams fans. You know, heart-stopping. They could have taken the lead there with eight minutes left, but now we're stuck in a tie game scenario at 13-13. And my God, what a block. But that field goal unit's gotta be better. It gotta be better, you can't let get guys get through like that. That was not the kicker's fault, not the holder's fault, not the center's fault, and those are the three guys that typically make those mistakes, but those blockers, they can't let anything down because things like that can happen. Yeah, it looks too easy for that Wilton defenseman to get in and make that block. And now we're stuck at a tie game, and this is really anyone's game for it. Wilton with the clear momentum shift. They are very loud right now on the opposing sideline. Let's take a look at that play. A touchdown there from Garcia, exactly what the Rams needed in this one to tie up the score at 13-13. Till in this game just got a whole lot more interesting. Yeah, this will be a fun last eight minutes, Gray. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Maybe even overtime, who knows? I mean, and the bomb squad's still here for the Rams, so that's something to be proud of.
Stevens Let's with go. the kick. And my God, that thing went high and far. Great place kick. Let's see what this special teams unit can do. Come on. And bring some guys down. A large swarm of numbers in on that tackle. Trey Walker being one of them. That's, as we said his name a couple of times tonight, he's been a, a great force for the Rams in this special teams heavy game. Now we have the Warriors will start on their 23 yard line. Decent field position to start. It'll be interesting to see what to do here after Rams scoring a touchdown. Great, what do you think we'll see from Wilton right here? I mean, Wilton's going to air the ball out. It's worked for them all game. They need a touchdown. Their go to guys are on the outside right now, ready to catch these balls. Haggerty takes the snap. They're Whoa. The and we and a clear play. hold. Clear hold on the play. But good run by Wilton. I mean, but it's going to be it's gonna be brought back. You it's could not back. have a worse holding penalty if you're number 77, Smith, Ethan Gallo. who was the one that was held, still made the tackle on the play. And that will be all, brought all the way back. I don't know why Wilton isn't listening. I keep saying the running isn't working. But they are obviously not listening to this broadcast right now, Greg. I, I mean, that makes a lot of sense because they're playing the game, but to, I mean, look, if Schmitz wasn't healthy, he was making that tackle. Yes. Okay? And you, you see the, the options that the quarterback had, Haggerty. I, I, well, I mean, look, that wasn't an option. That was a very well-run reverse. It faked us out, our eyes, visually, but look, the Rams were there. Schmitz kept contained, and it was a cold, clear as day. You saw Gallo, uh, the, I think the one who had the holding penalty, very upset. But, I mean, that is about as textbook of a holding call as you'll ever see. And now we'll see a first and 20 now. Two wideouts on each side. Smith in the motion. Haggerty, the shotgun out to the side. A lot of pressure. And Smith with the catch. Mazza with the takedown. Yeah, when when you're back with it, your own 15, you got to go back to what works, and that's the passing. Is go get about eight yards of the play there. And look, Haggerty went all the way back to that kind of red zone area. So technically, from where he threw the ball, that was a gain of about 15, 20, even though it was ultimately a loss on the play. So this, this passing's working out. They've got to keep doing it. Haggerty takes the snap, drops back, a pass again. No surprise, that deep ball goes up. The coverage by Luke Bob, great lockdown coverage. Not sure what flag that sideline's looking for because they were front row seats to see nothing. You, you know, Greg, whenever there's a little long pass like that, a little pushing, just a little bit, obviously the receiving team's going to, or offense is going to be asking for a PI, but right there, nothing crazy. No need to call PI, and it'll be third and 12. Seven minutes left in the game here, Gray. A key third down conversion. If Wilton doesn't convert, that could change the tide for this one. Especially with where they're at. It will give Buchanan some decent field position to work with. Haggerty drops back once again to pass. That's all they've done tonight. Garcia now gives Haggerty some pressure. That ball too deep and almost intercepted by Alex Benevento. And Dylan, let me tell you something. If number nine, uh, Cole Stevenson, didn't turn into a DB there, Benevento would have returned that one. You know, I was I was thinking that Stevenson could have maybe brought it in again as we saw him do it against Luke, uh, Luke Bob, but when it's, you against, when it's him against Alex Benevento, you know that's not going to happen against Alex. Oh, LG, I'm with all the momentum right here, going from a, a touchdown to a three and out. And that's a very big three and out. We'll see what Kinsberg does in this kick. They give the Rams some hope. The snap very high. Ginsburg almost blocked. He gets that punt off. And it was a good punt. Went pretty far. So close by Michael Smith to block it. And what a play from Luke Ginsburg. You know, Wilton's moved around a lot with their punters today so far. And Ginsburg, the junior, making that huge play to get a high snap and turn it into a, as far as Wilton's concerned, a perfect punt. But now the Rams have pretty good field position starting on the Warriors' own 48. Hopefully they can at least get into field goal range to take the lead. And the Rams, 
I'd say are 50 yards away from coming away with this one. Depending on how long this drive takes. Maybe their defense has been playing today, the snap. To Robinson, he'll keep it, and it's a, it's a pretty strong gain. Yeah, that's a good gain, five yards. Could never be not happy with five yards in the first play. Robinson. I don't think he's gotten enough credit tonight. Yeah, Robinson coming off being Gruden, Gruden player of the week. You know, he's a great quarterback, can run or throw. And Dave Rudin is in attendance tonight. There's a lot of media here. This game is highly anticipated. It's been highly viewed. There's a flag down, a full start on the Rams. And now they'll just go back to second and ten, which is not what you want right now. Right. I mean, legal procedure. It's it's one of those things that you've got to be better about, but. To be honest, this gives the Rams the same positioning as a first down incomplete pass or something like that. So it's not going to kill them, but it definitely puts them in a worse place than they were in before. Be interesting what they call now. No pass. The pass to Will Langford. Brought down. No game. Third down now. Both defenses going back and forth on just dominating. Smith checks in the game here. I'm actually kind of surprised um, Mike Smith's not in our running back. Coach Marinelli has been vocal earlier this season about um, you know the talent in Mike Smith as a runner. Obviously, he's, he's one of their top running backs, so surprise but I mean yeah but Cooper Smith's playing the way he is when you got Cooper Smith and Dylan Pryor there's no need to put another guy in there while they have at wide receiver but huge tackle there by number 24 Jack Schwartz and a great play design from this Rams offense but this Wilton defense is just doing more than they've been doing for the most part of today and to be honest Schwartz made a great play there huge momentum shift uh, that'll give Wilton now an opportunity to come back and take this one. We'll see if they can drive the field. They'll need to hit some deep balls, but this game is in anyone's hands. Yeah, with now being at 4.55 left in the game, really every possession's crucial. And did he touch the ball? No, he did not touch the ball, but it looked pretty close. That was close. Good pressure from number 24, Trey Walker, to get down there, and I believe it was picked up by Ryan Axon. It looks like they're kind of at a stalemate these last possessions with each team just going back and forth from their designated areas with it just being three and out after three and out. And Dylan, this game is very exciting right now. Four minutes, 45 seconds left to play here at Dunning Stadium. The rivalry matchup, homecoming weekend. There's a lot on the line. Haggerty in the backfield. McGovern to his left. Fake handoff. Haggerty will keep it to the left side. Met by Tachakarov and brought down. Stuffed. Running game has just not been successful at all for Wilton. Kanan's line has just been able to get in there over and over and over again. And this Rams defense might look like the Georgia Bulldogs, but they sure are playing like them. This defensive unit is talented. They make a lot of big plays tonight, and if the secondary can get their things together and stop giving up these deep balls, the Rams are in a great place to win this game. Trips to the right side. Haggerty in the shotgun. Once again, McGovern to his left. Haggerty drops back, no surprises there. He goes for the deep ball. That one in coverage from Connor Mazza over the head of Connor Mazza. Did he get a foot in bounds? It looks like he did. There is a flag down. I believe the flag's on the Rams. Number nine, Cole Stevenson, has been a game changer today, making crucial catches, especially over New Canaan's defensive backs. You know, Luke Bopp will try to cheer up Mazza, be like, it's okay, just get the next rep. and. Looks like they will be in bounds. I don't know what the penalty is. If anything, it's on the Rams, I think. But yeah, the penalty had to have been on the Rams. Uh, that whole Rams team kind of walked down knowing it was on them. But 
But like I said earlier, Gray, the one thing New Canaan's defense has to prevent is these big, deep passes, as we see here on the replay. Haggerty drops back and finds Stevenson for the huge pass. Here's Haggerty now once again in shotgun, dropping back. And that decision, not sure about that throw. You watch that right there once again on that right side. The Rams had about three, four linebackers and a free safety Benevento with nobody to guard, nobody to guard. Yeah, it looks like New Kane's defense is kind of realizing Haggerty is aiming to get something to Stevenson, but right there, just nothing open with two guys on him, Benevento and Bob. And the Rams are prepared. They're obviously in a deeper coverage package, and you know, here's Bob, the safety. A lot of pressure on his shoulders right now to not give up a deep ball, as obviously that's all Wilton's gone for in this fourth quarter. With also only three minutes and 45 seconds left in this game, Gray. This one could turn into the overtime matchup. Each team still have three timeouts. And Haggerty in the shotgun. Motioning across. Takes this one back. Haggerty once again throws the short ball. Clobbered by Mike Smith. And now will be a third and manageable. It'll be interesting to see what the Warriors call here. Probably will be like a slant or a five yard out is my guess. What do you think, Greg, right, we might see here from the Warriors? I mean, look, you know, the Warriors are probably going to throw the ball deep, and defensive coordinator Chris Sylvester knows that. As you, as you just saw there in the substitution, uh, the Rams are now moving to a, a two-down lineman front here, um, and they're bringing in that fourth safety, which is something that we've seen out of this Rams team. They've been doing it for a few years, so that fourth safety in Leahy should prove to be beneficial. The Warriors are just taking their time Getting rid of the clock. The pass. Another deep ball drops back. Haggerty, he's hit. Owen Leiden. Owen Leiden disturbing the QB there, making the pass be incomplete. And Haggerty is argued, is mad after the play. You see on this right here, here's the replay. Haggerty takes the snap, drops back. Owen Leiden with the pressure on the far side. The speed, the precision, and the great hit from the boating football player. Now be fourth and five. Four to five, bringing in the punt unit. And there is no way. No, it's they're not, going for it. They're going for it, and they're bringing the quarterback, Calabrese. Calabrese, who we saw in the first play of the game, which is an interesting play call with it being fourth and five with less than three minutes left in the game, putting in your second quarterback here. I mean, they're copying the Rams' jumbo. Here it is. And delay... Timeout for Wilton because it would have been delay of game if they didn't call a timeout. Leaving the clock with two minutes and 52 seconds. Rams still having three timeouts and the Warriors having two. And Marinelli has to have a smile on his face saying, this looks pretty similar to what we normally run. The Rams are obviously known for that, that jumbo set with Luke Green in the backfield and three down linemen. So looks like Wilton's going to copy that. And we'll see if they come back out with the same formation. This is probably one of the, probably, it is the biggest play of the game so far. Crucial fourth and five. Look, if the Rams stop them on this four and five, they have good field positioning. All they need is a field goal to win this one. So getting any points on the board is going to be huge, and it's going to be important, and it's crucial, as you said, to getting themselves back in this ball game. As for Wilton, if they get this first down, if they get this, fourth and five conversion. It's gonna put them in a great space to try and get some points on the board. They don't have the kicking power, the kicking, um, you know, they don't have that kicking ability behind them as New Canaan does. They've got a little more range in that aspect, but you know, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Wilton just needs four downs to get a deep ball and one deep ball could be one touchdown. Less than three minutes left. This play being very huge. Uh, they will now punt it. They'll punt the ball. And that is a big momentum changer, to be honest. It's, it's almost an assertion of dominance. This Rams crowd, the loudest I've heard it so far this afternoon. Punt from Ginsburg up in the air. They've got to poison that one. Let that one roll and die out. And a great punt from Ginsburg gets the Rams inside their own six. You know, this is when 
game changers are made when you start on your own five yard wow. line with less than three minutes uh, left here. Let's see if Luke Robinson can take his offense and go, come down this field and win the game for the And Dylan, Warriors. if this game was happening last year, we both know it would have been a 99 yard Telesco touchdown. <laughs> But now, the, you know, the Rams are going to have to review their options and say, hey, we've got a lot of great guys. Who do we trust with the ball? And do we want to make this a kind of miracle-type play where we look for that long shot? Or do we want to just drive the field, take out the 2 minutes, 38 seconds left in this game, either win or take it to OT? And last time they were in this position, they just ran jumbo, but they'll run their regular offense. Shotgun snap. Robinson. Set to throw a deep ball. Almost a fumble. If Robinson threw it a half a second later, that would have been a fumble and would have been a Warriors touchdown, maybe. And Dylan, wow. if you fumble in that situation, that's game. And that would just show that De the defense has been winning the games today. And I think this might be partially why New Cannon ran that jumbo to begin with, is to give themselves a little bit of field positioning, but second and 10. Yeah, Rob Robinson and the Rams will get out there scotch-free and it'll be second and 10. The hand off to Cooper Smith, up the middle. A solid gain of about two, three yards. And now, with a third and five, now, they don't really have to worry about a safety or anything like that. They can take their time in the pocket Luke Robinson to make good pass if that's what they decide to do with the New Cannon Rams. And uh, this, is, this is about just as crucial as that last fourth down conversion. Third and five here, the Rams are stuck in their own territory. Robinson, back to pass. Needs to get something out here. A flag's down on this one. There was a throw to Esposito for the first down. But it looks like it could come back because of a holding call on the new Cannon Rams. It does. That and ball will not count. Just like what happened to the Warriors earlier on their last possession, it happens to the Rams now. And it will stay third down. And a devastating shock. Devastating to this Rams team. They've been doing a lot of things right today. That is not one of them. Robinson making the great play, doing everything you're supposed to, and just gets called back for a, a holding call. And they'll move them half the distance back to the goal. And it'll be third and 10. That one hurts. Third and 10, we'll see what Rams will be able to do here. This is a crucial possession, Dylan, a crucial play. And the clock is running with 140 right now. The Rams are going to try and use up a little bit of that. And they'll hand off to Cooper Smith. Not sure if they thought they were getting 10 yards out of that one, but they got one. Now the Rams are looking to punt it, and it's going to give the Wilton Warriors good field position. Unless Luke Reed can punt it 60 yards, 70 yards. The, w the Wilton Warriors are going to have good field position and have a chance to score. And you need a good punt and a lucky roll for that to happen. I mean, a lot of things need to go your way to create possessions like that. Let's see here on that last play. The handoff to Cooper Smith up the middle just wasn't enough. A, a great tackle by, I believe, uh, that might as well been take Ryan a shot. Smith, although I probably have my numbers wrong. He's a wide receiver for that team. One minute and 21 seconds left. Looks like Wilton will be the last team to touch the ball in regulation. And you never know. Yes. You never know. You never know, that, Gray. That possession was two. Rams started with the ball two minutes, 38 seconds left. Right? So they used less than half of that time. So and the Rams do still have three timeouts. The Warriors only have one. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be big in this one to see who gets the ball back. Obviously, the Rams are gonna stop the Warriors from running out this clock, um, or maybe they go for the touchdown. We'll see. A lot of strategy comes into play. The snap is low, and Luke Reed somehow manages to get that one in the air. That. Could have been very bad for the McCain Rams, but Luke Reed was barely able to get the punt off. And now 
Wilton is starting on the Rams' own 45. And Luke Reed just saved this Rams team. Yeah, bad snap there, but was able to recover and get it off just barely. I was thinking we might see a punter running it, like one of those scenarios you see on Instagram, but he was able to just get it off and we don't have to worry about and, anything. And that was there. a 50-yard punt from the position he was in back in the end zone. One minute and 11 seconds left in this regulation. Haggerty drops back, another deep ball. He's got receivers open, brought down. Owen Leiden with Owen, the tackle. Owen Leiden takes him down with just his right arm, able to take him down. And the time will keep moving now at 59 seconds. Second and 17. Our clock's ticking here, 50 seconds left on our stadium scoreboard here. Wilton's in hurry up offense. Great and timeout call by the Rams to settle things down. Had some miscommun miscommunication on the substitution, so we'll just take a timeout with 40 seconds left on the clock. Second and, sec second and 16. 17. And that was a crucial play from Owen Leiden. We've said it before, we will say it again. Owen Leiden is one of the best outside rush players in, this, in the FCA and possibly in the state. He is just a dominant force. There's nothing you can do to bring him down. He'll get around on every single play. It's only a matter of how quick and haggard to get rid of the ball. Big second 17 here with little time left on the clock. And here's the replay of Leiden's sack, sheds his blocker, and like you said, with one arm, takes down Haggerty. Broke through that block from McGovern. Right through it. And we'll see second and long, but for this Wilton team, it, to be honest, doesn't really make a difference. They don't run the ball, they just throw it in. You know, what's an extra seven on a miracle deep ball? But this is when the Warriors have came for success, is throwing these deep balls. But we obviously see New Can Rams. Trips to the right, really Haggerty high tries to take it up the middle. Star. That's Miles Chisholm. The Washington and Lee commit with another sack on the play. Wow. Third and 20 here with the time moving. 30 seconds left. Miles Chisholm. Wilton taking their sweet time. The clock is ticking. And Wilton will use their last timeout with 30 seconds left on the clock. With 20 seconds left on the clock as the broadcast will update on that. And this game just got a whole lot more exciting. Not a lot of time left on the clock, Dylan. Unless something big happens here, third and long, there's a pretty strong chance this game goes into overtime. And if this one goes into overtime, that's anyone's game. I think this might be the first overtime game this season for both teams. And the thing is, the, the Rams still have two timeouts. So if they get an interception here on a deep pass or anything like that, they could still technically score like we were talking about before this possession, Greg. Here we go. The Rams need this stop. Can't give up anything deep. They've got five deep safeties. Five deep safeties. Two middle linebackers, two edge rushers, and two down linemen, and Michael Harris and Miles Chisholm. The bomb squad is loud for New Canaan. Haggerty drops back a deep ball. All deep routes. Owen Leiden chasing down Haggerty. Thank you and good night. This has been Odin, Owen Leiden's game on defense today. He's been making tackle after tackle, pass rush after pass rush, sack after sack, as you see right there. This is Owen's play. game, we're just watching it. That's, that's it. This drive has been Owen's game, we're just watching it. We're watching Owen Leiden make play after play after play, keeping the Rams in this game of which they've had so many mistakes that led to this 13-13 score. 12 minutes left, 
or 12 seconds left. Let's see what this offense can do. Yeah, I know with such little time left, if unless the Rams have a crazy uh, punt return, it will probably end the regulation. We'll see overtime. We'll see Alex Benevento get back there, just one guy back. Honestly, if the Rams, I'm hoping to try to get a blocked punt or something. As they'll put older guys up trying to get a block punt. No, Got a helmet very close to being off sides here. Then Cooper Smith almost on the block. Lightly lets down the punter. Great job by Cooper Smith. Punter Ginsburg very upset because he, he was touched a little late, but Cooper Smith did everything he could to stop. And Cooper with the very responsible play. And we'll see what's going to happen here. 4.5 seconds left. This Wilton defense can't give up anything else. 4.5 seconds left. This game is getting crazy. Dumb. I look, I like the swing pass to Benny. That's what our analysts up here are saying. Let's give it to Benevento, but you know what? They'll, they'll need this one out, make the right coaching decision, and we'll see him in overtime. This game is insane. Everyone's on the edge of their seats, Dylan. Everybody is on the edge of their seats. We'll begin an overtime session very shortly. This has been a crazy game, to say the least. Just what we thought, close, competitive game today. And, and look, this, this offense, or what's going on with the coaches? Is that a, coaches do the coin toss? Is that new? I guess today, that's the rule. Must be high school overtime rules. That's, that's actually kind of neat. <laughs> Both head coaches. This will determine who gets the first possession. Once possession is determined. So, Gray, do you know how high school overtime exactly works? I do not. I do not either, so I guess we'll, we'll find out. All right, ball will be placed on the 10-yard line, and both teams will get an opportunity to score. So this is uh, definitely a different overtime than a lot of you are used to in, in other sports and in other leagues. So this will be very exciting. Both teams get a 10-yard try uh, on the goal line. Yeah, it's kind of like college football, but instead of starting at the 30, they're starting at the 10, which is like the goal line. So it's really going to come down to which team has a better goal line offense and goal line defense. And I think personally, New Canaan is a favor in that because Wilton has been a threat in their passing and long distance game. And being in such a close counters on the goal line, it will be hard for them to be more successful than the New Canaan Rams. Look, yes, they're a favorite, but I mean, you just look at this bomb squad that Wilton brought. There are people here from both teams. It's a rivalry game. Anything can happen, and I can't stress that enough. It doesn't matter, you know, what, what team has these all-star players, what team is these all-FCAC players, anything can happen in a Wilton New Canaan game. Exactly, Gray. As you keep saying that, before the game, many people thought New Canaan Rams were going to win this game by a decent amount, but now we're here in overtime at tied 13-13. We'll see what the outcome of this one is. Both teams huddling up. We're going to bring it down to our sideline reporter, Ryan Bell. Ryan. Thanks, guys. And yeah, overtime period is about to begin, tied up at 13, courtesy of both a missed extra point and a blocked extra point. Obviously, both teams are going to get a chance to score the ball here, so it's just a matter of who the tougher team is, right? Both teams get a chance, so it's all going to come down to who is the tougher team. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Ryan. Both teams have had... Uh, thanks, Ryan. Both teams have had opportunities to take this game away. Obviously, New Canaan had a, a field goal attempt and then the extra point attempt, which was blocked, and then... Wilton could have hit that extra point, which 
kicker just missed. So a lot of both these Let's teams go, have had their chances. They haven't capitalized on them yet. So we'll see who takes it away and, and wins this football game. What will also be interesting is to see what side the ball is played on. Because if it's played on the side where the New Canaan Bomb Squad is, it's going to be very loud and a lot of noise favoring the New Canaan Rams. While if it's on the left side, it's going to be pretty neutral to say. Right, that definitely has an impact on it. And that's probably what Wilton's head coach, EJ Denuzio, is talking to the referees about. And looks like they'll have one timeout per team during this period. Captains will take the field here. Locked on. Nerves are very high right now. Anyone's game. We'll have a coin toss to determine possession here. It's like the coach was just beating about the rules earlier. Overtime. Wow. Did not think we'd be here today, Dylan. Uh, I just honestly would have thought one team would pull it over over the other. You know, overtime's rare in high school football. It's not super common. Um, Especially with a score of 13 to 13, with both teams missing their extra point. Right, and, and obviously both teams have had multiple chances to win this one earlier. I, I do think the Rams have made more mistakes that they normally don't make. So I do think they've been more of a victim to those mistakes in, in both the kicking game and in the, the passing game, the rushing game. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see which team corrects those mistakes in overtime. And it doesn't matter how you play in the first four quarters. It's about this last fifth quarter. So we'll see which team gets the ball first. And it looks like Luke Robbins is getting ready to go out. So I'm guessing the New Cane Rams will start with the ball first. Yep, the Rams offense will be taking the field. So... You know, obviously in the NFL, <laughs> over time, it's normally that first team that gets the first chance takes it away, but this one's going to work a little differently. Both teams will get their chance to win this one. New will start on offense. start on offense at the 10-yard line. It will be first and goal on the 10-yard line. They need to score. And if they do score, Wilton does have an opportunity to tie it up. So Garcia in the backfield. I like that in the red zone. I like Garcia in the backfield. I like Luke Reed blocking at that left end position. I like what the Rams are doing. I agree with you, Graylet. Garcia is the running back you want to run up the middle. Fake handoff to Garcia. That pass thrown to Benevento. And they call the P.I. And the Wilton defenders are mad after that, jumping up and down like a little boy not getting his candy and they'll move it halfway to the distance to the end zone and look that's exactly what the Rams needed on that play obviously you know he wasn't held when he was about to catch the ball he was held earlier in the play which is probably what they call the pass interference on so great call by the ref great vision now first and goal again because of the penalty it will stay first down First and five this time, however. The handoff to Garcia up the middle. Garcia, the power back. He gets stuffed, but no loss on the play. So to be honest, that doesn't really hurt the Rams. If anything, it's the same as getting one five-yard run. Exactly, Grant. And it'll be second five. Obviously, it would have been nice to get more yards, but they're fine with it. It's second and five. And they need a touchdown here. And look, I think if they're getting the touchdown, Garcia is going to be the guy with it. Well, you got to think they have four plays to do so because I doubt they would go for a field goal, but you never know. And Robinson with the touchdown! Luke Robinson! Big touchdown by Robinson. He was trying to find an open man, but took it for himself and got into the end zone. Broke a tackle, juked out one man, and ended up in the end zone. Gray, what do you have to say about that? Luke Robinson is a beast. He scored a rushing touchdown against St. Joe's, and all four of the other passes he completed in the first half were touchdowns. He's a near-perfect QBR. He's doing everything right. And now we'll see an interesting formation like we saw against Windsor, but now I guess they'll just run an extra special teams. I think they might have just done this to throw off so they can't block the extra point again, but we'll see here. And the extra point's good. Tucker yeah. Stevens, this game is up to the Rams defense. You know, 
the Rams defense has been very dominant today. The question is, do they let off right now? We will find out. And the bomb squad for New Canaan is moving is over. Moving to the other side of the field. Wow. As the cheer on for their New Canaan Rams to this bring even more intensity to this game that there already has been. This bomb squad's bringing the energy, getting the crowd going. This is awesome. You don't see this every day. The entire bomb squad. This just shows the town coming together. Haggerty in the shotgun. Goes for the hard count. Oh, and they the fake reverse to the throw. Haggerty's nowhere to be found. Brought down. New Canaan defensive stop. And it will be second and 15. Not where you want to be if you're the Wilton Warriors. Walter Schmitz with the big play. Tried to go for a trick play there. Was not successful. And look, trying to make the, the that team, like Haggerty's trick play there was to make the Rams defense confused obviously it was a sudden snap they just snapped it suddenly and that was number 19 on the throw Colin Dexter at tight end trying to kind of run the Philly special actually is, is, is what they ran the Philly special and you had Nick Foles or uh, Haggerty out there on the actually outside. exactly what they were doing but they are not Philly so it did not work in their favor and Haggerty deep 20 yards away some pass pressure great coverage by Connor Mazza and just was did, just did not make it to Ryan Smith. It was not near him. You know, as a tall wide receiver as him, those is what you want to do. Just chuck it up to him. Hope he comes down with it. But you got to get it near him. And right there, just wasn't. And the Rams just brought off two down linemen. They're going to run the their two down linemen set with two edges edges to give themselves a fourth safety. Now we'll see a third and fifteen. This is the biggest play of the game. Haggerty drops back. The deep ball throw picked off by Luke Bob. That is game. The new Canaan Rams defeat the Wilton Warriors 20 to 13. Luke Bob sends the dagger to Wilton by with that interception right there, ending the game and giving the new Canaan Rams the win as the new Canaan Bomb Squad runs on the field with them. And new Canaan wins the football game. The final, 20 to 13, overtime win. And we will see you guys back. Next game is senior night. Great win for the New Canaan Rams. Very dominant defense for both teams this whole day. And at, when it came close, New Canaan prevailed and was able to score a touchdown and then play perfect defense like we've seen them do all day today. And New Canaan holds their near perfect record against Wilton. Wilton has only defeated New Canaan once since 1995. Wow. Dylan, that was an incredible game. Very exciting from the beginning. As I said, the Rams were not panicked that entire game. They knew what they had to do, and they performed phenomenally. Yeah, you love to see a big chippy close game between two FCX rivals going at it play after play and at the end going into overtime and ending with an interception doesn't get better than that Gray. Right a great interception from Luke Bob Haggerty obviously stressing to get that throw across because he was nervous he had a long ways to go third and I think 15 maybe yes. 20 from the goal line so the odds of him even getting the touchdown were low enough so he just went for that and obviously it <clears throat> did not work out in his favor and the Rams prevail. Good win for the New Canaan Rams. Probably not how close they wanted it to be, but a win's a win. And they go on to next week now being five and one and Wilton being four and two. Two losses back to back weeks. Right, and four and two is kind of killing for Wilton. They've lost two games in a row now. Obviously the players very upset, but to be honest, they should just be happy about you know, making it to overtime against a very talented team. And, you know, their performance today shows that they could take on any FCAC team. 
and potentially any team in the state. And, you know, they're in class double M, so their competition's not going to be as hard as the Rams in terms of winning that state championship. But, you know, a, a great step in the direction of a Rams win. Agreed, Gray. Very fun game to watch today. Probably the closest win uh, the Rams have had this year where they had that big loss to Shelton, but ever since that, they've just been smoking teams, winning big games, not, nothing close, and now they come here, learn how to play in the last two minutes, what to do in overtime, and how to win with such a close game. This is without a doubt a great learning win, and here you see Coach Marinelli talking to his players and the whole team getting very excited. A, a huge win for the Rams. So we'll now send it down to our sideline uh, reporters for their thoughts on the game and, and how this one turned out. Thanks, guys. We're, we're live right here. 20 to 13 is the final score in overtime. PJ, what are your initial thoughts? I mean, that was just an outstanding game from both sides. The defense, the camaraderie, um, the offense in overtime by the Rams and the defense, both, you know, just outstanding. Great overtime play by the Rams. They were obviously just better conditioned, more um, fired up to win that, and it paid off. I mean, I think focusing on that overtime period, it was a great stretch on that offense, right? The Luke Robinson touchdown run. But I want to talk a little bit about that defense. What made it so special on that final drive to be able to hold the Will and Warriors on? You know, I mean, it was just that up front play, that front seven, front eight, whatever it may be. You know, New Canaan, they were just getting after him, pounding ground every single time. You saw Haggerty, he tried rolling out, and they just got stuffed, nothing. Dexter on the reverse, he couldn't get anything. And then, you know, you finally resort to the pass, and finally, you know, New Canaan's got a great secondary. So Luke Bob plays the ball, outstanding, gets the pick. Absolutely. You know, last question, right, the offense, a little slow start in the first half. They picked it up in the second half. What is that resiliency from Jimmy Nugent's offense? You know, I mean, it's just classic of New Canaan. You saw that first half against Shelton. They weren't very good. Then that second half, they came back, almost won that game. Windsor, it was 12-12 at halftime, wound up being 33-12. So it's just, you know, New Canaan, they've got to play their MO, you know, their mojo, and that's what you saw here today. Absolutely. Well, that's all from us on the sideline. Gray and Dylan, back up to you guys. Thanks, guys. It was very exciting seeing the Philly special uh, in front of our own eyes in person for the first time. So we'll say a, a quick thank you to our sponsors before we head to the end of this one. This game is sponsored by our NC Rams All Sports Booster Club Platinum and Gold Sponsors. We would like to thank our platinum sponsor, Anderson Kenny Architecture, a full-service practice that encompasses a range of com uh, commissional, residential, and commercial projects. Each project is a thoughtful collaboration tailored for clients and their needs. The outcome is highly personal, constructed with intention and integrity. We would like to thank our platinum sponsor, Dr. William Fessler of Fessler Family Dentistry the dental office of your entire family's dental needs. At Williams Fessler's Family Dentistry, smile, you're in good hands. Platinum sponsor, Frang Frangione Engineering, planning on putting in a pool or an addition onto your house? Are you having drainage issues on your property? Frangione Engineering can help you find a solution. Platinum sponsors and New Canaan High School alumni, Leo and Steve uh, Carl of Carl Sh uh, Chevrolet, uh, who have been proud supporters of local athletic programs for generations. Their dealership has been serving Fairfield County since 1927. Their team is ready to assist with all of your automotive needs. Platinum sponsor Manfredi Jewels. Manf Manfredi Jewels, your local official Rolex jeweler, is excited to continue carrying the finest jewelry and watch brands and welcome the Duquesne community and their new, uh, newly renovated store this fall. Go Rams! Platinum sponsor Renaissance Partners, a family-owned and new Canaan-based res residential building and remodeling company serving all of Fairfield County. Platinum sponsor Walter Stewart's. Walter Stewart's market has supported NC Rams athletics for the entire, and the new Canaan, the entire New Canaan community for years. Walter Stewart's is your fresh local market. We'd also like to send a thank you to our gold sponsors, Performance Optimal Health, proudly supports all New Canaan Rams athletes in their 2023-2024 seasons. Their team helps clients achieve their health goals through exercise, recovery, nutrition, 
and stress management. They offer their congratulations to all teams competing this season. Again, a big thank you to all of our sponsors. The NC Rams All Sports Booster Club supports all New Canaan High School athletics. Go Rams. Dylan, what a game today. Amazing seeing that game going to overtime. A lot of anticipation, a lot of people in the stands. Final score, 20 to 13. The Rams take this one away in the big overtime victory. A special thank you to everyone in our NCTV crew who helped out. Our producer, Anav, you guys did a great job today. So myself, great Tomasco, my partner, St Dylan Stevens, signing off. Thank you.